Greetings and salutations, friends, and welcome to Equestria at War. One of our uh, funded stream goal funds for the chat. Equestria at War. Hmm. A Hearts of Iron 4 mod, and a surprisingly good one as well, that is still receiving updates to this day. It's still going strong. In fact, the recent update, The Way of Fire, was released just, what, weeks ago, I think? No, not very long ago at all, which adds Chinese ponies. Because why not, I do suppose. <laughs> well, Tibetan ponies, but uh, ponies more correctly, are the, uh, the, the Kirin race, which featured in precisely one episode, and then were then never ever mentioned again. But to the autists in the My Little Pony community, that is, of course, more than enough. And, uh, damn, I, I gotta tell you, too. So we were uh, tell, told to play the Griffonian Empire, so we shall. Uh, now, I do want to, uh, hmm, strengthen Equestria, definitely. Uh, what is that? Playful air experience, division, tradition. Is that the Dokyan output, navy for consumption? Yeah, that's a fair enough one, I guess. Definitely strengthen Equestria. Strengthen the, strength, strengthen the Changelings, definitely. Strengthen the Dreadlings, absolutely. Hmm, those are the fun ones. I don't Strengthen Lake City, yeah, they're on my side of the board. There you go, right. Off we go. A doorman, GW Double Down on Twitter is funny to me. Kenshi! We do still have the Oh god, that's that's a lot of that's a lot of lore. <laughs> yeah. Um somebody wrote books for this. GW Down Down Twitter is funny to me. I did see that. Yet further video content for me. Thank you very much, GW. Raining Ted, a favorite pony race that isn't Alicorn. Uh hmm. Unicorn, because having magic seems useful. Ah, the Griffonian Empire, once the strongest power in the world, stretching across most of Griffonia and even having colonies on Equus, but fate was cruel to the Imperial Dynasty and their empire would not last, as will not any empire in essence. Grover I of Griffinstone, the wielder of the sacred idol of Boreas, founded the empire in the year 705 by uniting almost all Griffin kind under one banner, under one boner. The empire continued to prosper and grow under the tight but just talents of the Griffinstone dynasty. Their conquest of the Griffonian continent, continued by the infamous warrior emperor Grover II, was however halted by the ponies of the east who would later form the River Coalition to oppose the Empire and stop it from threatening their sovereignty. With the end of expansion, many peasants and previous subject noble families had time to plot against the Emperor and his divine rule, beginning to see him as a foreign tyrant rather than a just ruler. Nevertheless, Emperor Grover III managed to keep the Empire together and ensure the loyalty of most of his subject lords for many years. Those who continued to resist him soon vanished without a trace. He also established the Imperial Army! Yes! which soon became the largest military force in the world and sought to form an imperial identity to unite the many cultures of his vast empire. However, during the reign of the next emperor, Grover IV, cracks began to appear in the foundations of the empire. Whilst he was an expert administrator who was liked by the common griffins and began the modernization of the empire, the nobility despised him and grew increasingly disillusioned with Groverian rule. When he unexpectedly died, leaving underage and fragile Grover V to succeed him, the nobles made their move and formed a regency council to govern the empire. But the true decline of the empire did not start until the Griffinstone cadet branch lost hold of the idol of Boreas, the ancient relic that was the symbol of the power and legitimacy of the imperial dynasty. It was stolen in 971 by a wicked cyclops named Arimapsi, who also slew King Guto VI, the supposed regent of Grover V. With his, this loss, it is said the gods abandoned the empire. That, incidentally, is the fancy cup that our strawberry waifu is wielding there. That is the icon of whatever the hell, fluffiness. 
After the mysterious assassination of King Gumberto, the Kingdom of Wingbari was the first to succeed in 972, under the leadership of the newly crowned Garibald Teloniel III. Together with their allies in the soon-formed Carthanian Pact, after that, the discreet family of Aquileia succeeded, taking with them most of the West. Other smaller vassals such as Broodfeld followed suit. Everything climaxed is the uh, Fire is the in 978. The Empire was still in a regency, and the power-hungry imperial nobility prevented Grover V from ascending to the throne even after he came of age. This unjust regency came to an abrupt end in the winter of 978, when thousands of angry peasants and lowborns assaulted the imperial palace. The emperor survived with the aid of Archon Eros VII and fled to the countryside. Though many nobles were lynched, based, a Griffonian republic was proclaimed which briefly replaced the empire. In the chaos that followed, Skyfall slaughtered the Imperial Garrison, seized the Imperial Navy, and formed an independent trade federation. A counter-revolution led by, led by Duchess Gabriella Eagleclaw of Strawberry was launched by the surviving nobility just a year later, and Emperor Grover V regained his throne for good, whilst most Republicans were forced to flee to the cold north. Following the Republic coup, many of the more powerful nobles in Hatzland, the heartland of the Empire, received considerable autonomy and remained nominally loyal to the Emperor, but the Empire was nothing but a shadow of its former self. With only a fraction of its territory left, and Grover V's health rapidly declining, the remnants of the Empire must seek out a valid, capable regent to lead them forward until the next Emperor, Grover VI, is ready for the task. Many fear that recent history will repeat itself. The Gifonian Empire is holding on by a thread. Will it return to its former glory and defeat the various traitors on the continent, or will it finally collapse entirely? Only the gods know. Can't help me. <laughs> right. The law of which there, are, there is a lot. Ah, great. Donating rest of lacking hi-fi rush stream fun before you forget how to time button and <laughs> get worse than at the start. Thank you very much, Ah, great. Though I feel that sail ship has already sailed. Uh, young son, I thought you were doing the 40k event. The April Fool's one? Um, I don't, I don't know if it's available anymore, actually. Um, my next one, my favorite pony is the Half Dragon Pony versions. What, the kidding? And Iraqi oil money, art, World War II law, when? And what's with the Kenshi, with Kenshi chats? Uh, we are currently funding Kenshi. Let's see, the uh, the Kenshi fund is currently sitting, uh, it's not doing too bad, honestly. It's at 12% now, 119, $120. Not very doing too bad, actually. To see whether or not we can fund Kenshi, which, uh, again, I, I, I feel like, oh, Oh, Jesus. Oh, that's a tiny research tree. Oh, it's so small and cute. Oh, 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 oh. oh it's adorable. Oh, my God. Ah, oh, I'm used to black ice. This is just, this is cute to me. Oh, it doesn't even scroll to the side. <laughs> How amusingly tiny! <laughs> oh, God help me. What, I don't even have to produce boots for my soldiers? What is this, some kind of <laughs> introduction at mods? <laughs> what about rations? What about food? What, I don't even need to create resources from the component parts of aforementioned resources? <laughs> What? What is this? You tell me I don't need steel mills to create steel? I don't need fucking bauxite and iron? Ah, <sighs> that's that's truly very disappointing. Very, very disappointing indeed. Right. So most of my army is actually looking. Uh, it's actually looking pretty, pretty good. Honestly, not too bad. Not too shabby. 
Um, I'm guessing I have, like, dick all civilian factories. Yep, I do. So let's just begin building that immediately so I can get something that resembles an economy going. Any decisions? No, I'm definitely not going to start creating an agency right off the bat. I, uh... I am a very small and very poor nation. More airframe, medium airframe. Low pony power. Oh no! Not low pony power! Whatever shall I do? Right, so the Griffonian Empire is over here. Uh, these are my previous loyal subjects that, according to the law, splintered away, including Republicans and all kinds of vile things. Here are the ponies that rose up in revolt against me and overthrew my rightful rule. They will be taught the error of their ways. Down here we have more griffins, some Marxist griffins, of course. Philippe Redgale. We have this one, which is a saucy girl. She might be a future ally. And I do believe, um... I do believe in Kingdom of Wing Bardi we have, uh, we have Bicolini somewhere, I think. I think we have Bicolini somewhere in Wing Bardi, but he hasn't, he hasn't arisen yet, which is tragic. Fire is the answer. <laughs> to the south, we have llamas and zebras and all manners of terrible things. And apparently some hippogriffs. All right, all right. I, I, I don't think any of this is canon, mind you. Actually, no, I do believe that, like, some of this is, is Suda's daughter kind of canon. Some of it. And then, of course, Equestria, under the uh, beneficent authoritarian rulership of Princess Celestia, allied to the Crystal Empire with Cadence, the cuckold princess, I'll point out. Then we have uh, our town, Stalingrad, not being led by Twilight Sparkle, which I find to be a little bit disturbing, but I guess she's in Equestria by now. We have some uh, yaks, the, the changeling, of course. Bug, bug horse, best waifu, obviously, and some deer, who will represent be representing Finland in this particular endeavor. Okay. Forward to glory. Yeldarin, I'm getting heated trying to get people to understand why female stoads is an insult to the sister's silence, but I'm getting nowhere. I need a distraction like this. Well, they used to be unique. Now they're not. They have, they have reduced the uniqueness of this faction. They have made them lesser than they once were. They used to be... Oh, God, don't tell me. All right. More lore. Despite his deterior deteriorating health, the Emperor has decided to embark on a trip across Hertzland via train in order to showcase the new Imperial Railway system, and more importantly, to convince the people that his days are not yet over. Reluctantly, after heavily protesting against the trip and arguing that he should stay in bed, the Emperor's doctors let him go. Nobles and commoners alike gathered at Griffenheim's brand new railway station to witness the Emperor's departure. A shining station locomotive had been prepared with a dozen ornate cars attached to it, all built by the finest metal workers and carpenters money could hire. The trip was supposed to be long and last several weeks, so there was enough space and supplies for His Majesty's entire entourage. When Grover V finally arrived on his personal automobile later than expected, the nobles raced to welcome him and shower him with praise. About the railway project, and how all would now witness the coming of modernity to the Empire. The Emperor nodded wearily, as he always did when receiving empty platitudes from greedy psychopaths, sycophants, and cuffed. Coughed. He slowly walked to the station escorted by heavily armored Imperial Knights, and was next beset by commoners who either lauded his project or begged for, begged for reforms to give them land and bread instead of expensive trains. When he finally got inside his private railroad car, he asked to not be disturbed, sat down, sighed, and took a nap. The train whistled, signaling that its journey had been begun. What is the worst that could happen? I'll take that as an indication that I should spend this political power as swiftly as possible. Ban communism! <laughs> yes! Burn communism! I don't even know if there's communism in my country. I don't know, I don't care. Ban communism! Oh, God heavens. <laughs> We're not even past the first month. Uh, oh yeah. 
The Grand Hoofball Game. The Vrax Yellow Jackets and the Griffenheim Fowl is faced off today in what many expect to be the sporting event of the century. The two teams have shared what many would call an unfriendly rivalry ever since the first encounter each other on the hoofball field 21 years ago. Ever since that climactic day where the score ended up being a 6-6 tie, the two teams have vowed to defeat each other. The roster roster for both teams was considered phenomenal today, with many promising newcomers on both sides. Many expected that today's game would finally bring an end to the streak of stalemates that have plagued the two teams as each team has yet to beat the other. For 21 years? <clears throat> Jesus. Alas, it seems that today was not the day, with the match result ultimately being declared null and void by the referee. The problem started just eight minutes in when the Je Yellow Jackets managed to score an early goal against the Fouls. This early setback caused the Fouls to panic, and a few minutes later one of their star players, Herman Mudbeek, was disqualified after it was declared that picking up the ball and flying it into the other's team goal was not a legitimate move. This string of setbacks continued to plague the fouls for the rest of the game, and finally two came to a head just scant seven minutes from the end of the game. 4-2 in the Yellow Jack's favour. It was then that the unconscious bodies of several prominent members of the fouls were discovered. This led to the unmasking of three changelings which had apparently infiltrated the fouls in an attempt to sabotage their efforts. The stadium then erupted into a brawl between the supporters of the two teams, whilst the Yellow Jackets and Fowls quickly left the scene. While this might be the most controversial match between the two teams yet, it is far from the last as a rematch has already been scheduled, with many eager fans pre-ordering their tickets as soon as the announcement came. Although the Yellow Jackets will be sporting an all-new team after the previous members were shot by their guards upon returning to their hotels. That is unfortunate. <clears throat> the Colt Stream Summit. Today, the Coalition General Reporter released the agreement drafted by the leaders of the River Coalition after their summit in the city of Colt Stream. As per the course, <clears throat> the summit formally renewed the defense pact between all eight nations and the promise to stand together against Griffonian incursions. So we're here. However, the agreement goes beyond the status quo and actively condemns the bloodshed currently occurring in the country of Longsword, warning Count Pallas to end his abuse of native ponies. Hmm. Longsword? Ah. Native ponies, eh? No. Oh, supremacist. The Zagibers also hopes for a peaceful resolution of the Brodfeld civil war, but the language included in pact does not pave the way for an immediate military intervention. A gift from Skyfall. Today, like each year, we have received a single coin, paid personally by the Chancellor of Skyfall, Ghislaine Guichard. The coin, an idol, is sent as a replacement and consolation prize for the lost idol of Boreas. It has been 35 years since the loss of the idol and 28 since Guichard came up with that joke. He's apparently still not tired of it. Traitors. Ah, boy. Right, well, um... Is there anything I want to do, like, military-wise? I would like Imperial Knights, and apparently I can get some. Uh, infantry equipment. Okay, well, just give me as many knights as I conceivably possibly can, basically, because they're pretty gosh darn overpowered, so do that. I seem to be running out of fuel, but it's going to be a while until I actually run out of fuel, so meh. Okay, excuse me. I'm going to go get something to drink. This is apparently going to be quite taxing on the throat.
I was not exaggerating when I said they'd written literal, actual books about this goddamn mod. <clears throat> Back home! The railroad trip was a rousing success. The Emperor and his escort had first gone from Griffenheim to Brunzenkrutz, where loyal Diamond Dog nobles welcomed him extremely warmly and gave him many gifts. Uh, diamond Dogs. Disgusting. He then travelled to Reed Wetter, where he spoke with Duchess Gabriella Eagleclaw, his dear cousin and friend, and then across the Griffking River to nearby de Vilugus, where he enjoyed a quiet dinner with Duke Gerlach IV of Fithis Next. His journey took him to Old Wingberg, where the local peasant council welcomed him to its members, offering their own fresh farm produce to show their gratitude for the railroads. What, well, peasant communes? In my nation? Apparently we're going to have to have some purging before we get done with this little railroad trip of ours, it seems. <clears throat> Soon the Emperor arrived in the free city of Romau. There's an awful lot of free cities in my empire, and I don't like it. Where Archon Arion, the, oh, what's that, 12th, wished to discuss politics with him in private. But was refused by the tired Emperor, who was not particularly fond of the infamous zealots. A day later, he was in Greenback, where local engineers who had worked on the railway project were anxious to know if he had enjoyed the ride so far. When it came time to head to Angriva, the Emperor asked if they could just go home instead, but his servants insisted they had to complete the whole journey. So he would not, God forbid, insult <coughs> Baron Lear, the Vicious, and Princess Di Diesela, the Insane. Grumbling, he slept until the train arrived in Griffin, but struggled to wake up. It was all in vain, it turned out, as the Baron had no interest in meeting him. The visit to Katharineburg was equally swift, so they would avoid catching a curse or two. Then finally, after many weeks, the trip had ended and the exhausted Emperor returned home. But there are, by the way, undead ponies as well. Rosa Maledicta. She makes zombie ponies, because why not? But on the following day, he barely got out of bed and complained of pain. Doctors promised to check him as soon as he had held urgent meetings with aristocrats. And so the Emperor met noble after noble, hearing their petty complaints, pretending to listen to their pleas whilst trying to not fall asleep, until he collapsed without warning. Archon Eros the Seventh, no, that's not far. Sixth. Seventh. Sixth? Seventh? Hmm who advising the Emperor quickly came to his aid and accused the nobles of poisoning him. When he realized his majesty had lost consciousness, the 90-year-old Griffin tried to carry him on his own and shouted for aid. The Emperor was quickly rushed to his private chambers and is currently being taken care of both by the Emperor's finest medical experts. The Archon spends a day and night sleeplessly praying to the gods. <clears throat> and there that political power disappeared. I was indeed correct to use it as soon as the video game gave it to me. Equestria Games. The annual celebration of Equestria Games in Crystal City have just come to a close, with Princess Celestia herself holding a moving speech about friendship and its importance for all pony kind. Racists. The games went ahead without any major problems, and its ponies from all over Equestria contenders and spectators alike travelled to the Crystal Empire for this special occasion. Like every year, these games have helped ponies come together in friendship and tolerance. Oh, fix that. At least for the moment. We shall see whether this will have any major impact on pony politics in the near future. Mm, pony politics. There we go, there's Beak. Oh my god! Spare me a second or two! Oh heavens. <clears throat> Apollyon Cruz becomes a member. Thank you. Um. Hmm. Phil Moore, how do you feel with Asmon reacting to your vid? So you're hitting the big time. I'm loving it. I'm very grateful to Asmon Gold for reacting to my videos. Uh, Young Sun 2, pick the Archon route. Sadly, I am already locked into the uh, Strawberry route because of, well, you know, the artwork. So this is one thing I will not allow chat to decide. Even capitalism cannot override Bino artwork. And Mark Shame, Temple and Institute, and Sig Marxist are having a victory lap. They've already named themselves the Gate Crushers. Be nice and knowing art. Well, of course. I mean, again, anyone who thought that this wasn't going to happen was, well, ignorant of the opposition. 
Games Workshop is not the keepers of 40k, in my opinion. They are simply just the people who will ruin and devolve their own raw lore. In fact, they said on Twitter just recently that there have always been female custodies, despite of course having also written in the lore that there are not female custodies, that they are recruited solely amongst the sons of nobility. That'll be tomorrow's video. I'm just happy for the content myself. <clears throat> right. Piccolini becomes Prime Minister. An intense week of backroom meetings between the King and Piccolini has finally produced a result. The King spoke to a large crowd in Carthin, announcing Guilu Piccolini, leader of the far-right PNF, as Wing Bari's new Prime Minister. Replacing the previous Ventriligo government, Piccolini has formed a new cabinet, surprising most of the inclusion of socialist ministers. I don't know that he's surprised. And has promised a swift end to the political deadlock. Experts are skeptical of this chance, but there is a certain sense of hope among the common wing bodies. Perhaps the self fashioned Duce may bring about order. Oh, he'll bring order, just not quite in the way you'd expected. <clears throat> the Emperor is dead. Oh, wow, wasn't that surprising indeed? Hmm. Unfortunately, after nearly a month of treatment and therapy, ranging from latest scientific medicine to holy anointments by the priests, zebra potions, and other exotic magical mystery cures, Emperor Grover V of his name was embraced by the claw of Boreas at the age of 47. His caretakers said his last words were, was, Boreas, did I do good? <laughs> <coughs> His unstable and controversial reign has finally come to an end and all of Hertzland is in mourning. With black flags hoisted from Rottendam to Strasbourg and from Yale to Varsifur, his funeral process in Greffenheim was attended by hundreds of thousands of Griffins. His closest friend, Gabriel Eagleclaw, was the only vassal who arrived in time to participate and was seen wearing a beautiful yet mournful black gown. Archon Eros the sixth or seventh held a fiery sermon where he declared that an age had come to an end, but calmed down and almost broke into tears. Five minutes of silence were observed in the city as Grover V was laid to rest in the Grand Temple of Boreas. Some would say that Grover V was a pathetic ruler. Others would call him kind. Many citizens secretly despised him, yet few pitied him instead. His father, Grover IV, had intended to personally groom his heir and make him into a mighty warrior, cunning diplomat, and expert statesman, but died unexpectedly of a stroke when his only child was ten years old. So instead, Grover V would become a neglected puppet, while the nobles ruled the empire as they pleased, accruing more and more wealth and privilege. The young and sickly emperor was denied his throne when he turned 18 and lacked the willpower to demand it. But it later turned out he did not need to do so. The revolution of 978 brought a bloody end to the regency, and the emperor only survived thanks to Archon Eros's efforts. A counter-revolution led by Duchess Gabriella gave him his rightful powers, but at that point he ruled over a tiny remnant of the once vast empire, surrounded by vassals who deemed autonomy in return for their contribution to the counter-revolution. The emperor spent the following tumultuous years trying to learn how to rule, which meant that many of his well-intended projects failed miserably. His last gift to his people, and possibly his only accomplishment in life, was the brand new imperial railway system that connected much of Hertzland. He could be called incompetent or simply most unfortunate. Now, history repeats itself. Due to his only son and heir, Prince Grover VI, not being of the age in which he is capable of ruling the country himself, a regency council consisting of noble merchant princes and temple officials shall take over the apparatus of state until a more suitable solution is found. We can only pray it doesn't end like the previous regency. The Emperor is dead. Well, due to thumbnail reasons, we are going to go with the old guard. Traditionalism, nobility, aristocracy. All of these are good things. A letter from Skyfall. Uh, what's Skyfall? Is that is that relevant to me? Is that here somewhere? 
I have no idea. And then over here. No. It was late at night when Grover was brought a letter. He was tired, but he was told it was important. It had come from Skyfall. Apparently, personally penned by Gislein Guichard himself. The Emperor was surprised. Usually, the Chancellor would only write to him in January for his annual idol coin joke. He felt the letter for a moment, and no coin in it. Intrigued, he opened it and began to read. The tone was apologetic, and Guichard began explaining to him that he did since the secession and why he did it. The Emperor sighed. He knew all this and was waiting for a punchline. However, none arrived. It was all very obnoxious, but he could see the Chancellor's point, and then he read those final words. Guichard was apologizing, and no joke followed, only a hope for a detente and his signature. Grover took a long breath and looked at the window. For a moment, he didn't really quite know how to feel about all that. Tired as he was by the incessant wars and conflicts, he felt touched by the apology, of course. It couldn't erase all the wrongs, but he believed Guichard's letter to be genuine. Perhaps something could be done. Perhaps a detente could finally happen between the Empire and Skyfall. But he was too tired to write a response at this moment, and so he simply put down the letter on his table and went to bed. And then he fucking died. The Emperor is dead. After a long 40 years reign, the Griffonian Emperor Grover V passed away in the Imperial Palace. Once a brief period of utter chaos in the capital ended, a proper Regency Council was established to guide and care for Princess for Prince uh, Grover VI and protect the Empire. In the capital, and a ceremony was held confirming Prince Grover VI's succession to the throne. Time will tell if his regency will end like the last one in revolution and bloodshed. How I? Again, I was not kidding when I said that people took this mod very, very goddamn seriously. Uh. <laughs> Bronzeal sends a gift. In the wake of the Emperor's death, our vassals in Bronzeal have presented us with a truly beautiful gift. It is part of a diamond dog culture that in the event of a death, the dogs close to deceased will gather gemstones known as flower gems and sculpt them into a memorial. These dogs have remembered their loyalty to the crown well, and have submitted their gift. Crafting a truly impressive statue of Grover V constructed out of precious gems gathered by hundreds of thousands of the country's citizens. Oh, that's nice. Many have called for us to place this statue in the Imperial Mausoleum as a sign of our gratitude for this cherished gift. While it now would no doubt be a glorious addition to the Emperor's tomb, it cannot be or not be ignored that this statue would fetch a rather high price amongst art collectors, with the money helping to stabilize our budget. Hmm. It is a shame it never arrived! A tragedy indeed! Mechanicus on duty! This is Loki good writing though, can she? Let me. It, hmm, sometimes it doesn't like add it properly. Let me just add that in there. There you go. Service guarantee city. Yeah, no, unironically, like y you can yell at the bronies for a lot of things, but they take their setting very, very, very seriously. In fact, you know, us 40k lads could learn a thing or two from the bronies on this point. We really unironically could. I mean, look at our writing at the moment, hmm? Ooh, um, uh, hmm. Dearest knowing that says minus 10. 280 days. You know what? Yes, let's, let's get the division organization malice out of the way before anything bad happens, shall we? As I'm a little bit nervous that shit might go pear-shaped. The Duchess takes the stand. Poor Grover. He was too young, too fragile for this cruel world. But with change comes an opportunity. These were Duchess Gabriella's thoughts as she walked down the venerable halls of the Imperial Palace. As much as she personally considered the late Emperor her friend, she knew that he was no longer a proper ruler. The conniving nobles had abused Grover for too long, and she was ashamed to share the same room with them.
but that could be dealt with later. She had a grand vision for the Empire, one that would make Boreas proud of Griffins again, and more importantly give the young heir a proper territory to rule once he is old enough, but first she must deal with Eros and his thugs. Religious officials are such a nuisance. With that, she stepped into the council's chamber. The Archon was already there, giving his sermon to the gathered nobles. What a bother. She took a seat next to the Count of Bronze Hill. Turning, tuning out to speech and discussed the situation in hushed whispers, Gabriella ignored Eros' grandstanding until he finally decided to remove his old hide from the central podium. With that, she took a chance, strolled down to the centre and addressed the room. My fellow nobles and other griffins worthy of respect. The esteemed Archon speaks well of the situation. We must have stability, and we must reassert our authority. But how can we trust Arcanet to provide for our nation? She ignored the scowls that Onis's lackeys were sending her way. They talk of war, but do they care for the little griffin? How can we get anywhere before we modernize our beloved Hetzland, before we help our people? I implore you all to consider the right choice. Cheers and applause followed with a loud minority of jeers and claw pointing. It didn't matter. The council will back her claim for regency, and Eros will be marginalized, consigned to the altar where he belongs. Oh boy, 13% stability. That is unfortunate. Downright fucking tragic. Uh, the Quillid Dervishes declare war on the Thuderian Majocracy. Sounds like somebody else's problem. <laughs> Research speed, definitely. Oh boy. Civil War in Longsword. The rules would Oh, I remember this. Uh, this this was mentioned. Uh, so people were oppressing the ponies in Longsword and the River Republic didn't like it, but they didn't have the balls, the pony coxicles, to get involved militarily. Which means at the end of the day that all they're doing is whining and crying. Oh, please stop oppressing the ponies. Gonna do anything about it? No? Okay. To the mines the ponies go, I say. Mm. Civil War and Longsword. The country of Longsword has been under the rule of the reform reformist faction of the Griffin Knights. These reformists have been cruelly persecuting the local ponies, while failing to address any of the other issues in their nation. Well, discrimination against ponies is a cause and privilege in and of itself. Unrest has been brewing in the nation for some time now, with the ponies forming an organized resistance against the reformists. Rumor has it some griffins fed up with their government's atrocious behavior had joined the ponies in the struggle. Um, meanwhile, in the military and Rosewood Knights have used the opportunity to revolt as well, leading the saner elements of both Conrad Wavewing hopes to remind the Longswordians of their duty. Palace Dusk Talon, the reformist Count of Longsword, has denounced all his enemies, struggling to scramble his meager forces. <laughs> Starry Knights, I'm not reading all of that video game. Fuck you. Ooh, I do like you. You look quite cute. You are a non-aligned, and you are a supremacist. Well, I do like supremacists. May I, um... May I help either of you? Um... No, sadly. I may not. My stability is probably too shit. Mark a shame, GW should just end times War on 40k, make Age of Neoth, and then they can add in female Primaris Marines. They could. Psycho Science has been a member for eight months. Thank you very much, sir. Wow, you're actually playing it. The show started as a good, innocent, genuine product, but the fans were so passionate they took the ball and make it great. See, again, there is no mistaking the passion of the My Little Pony community. None. Again, I think we in 40k, oh, help me could learn a lot from this. And I do believe the reason behind this is because MLP was the last of the good 2000s shows. You know, the, the last of an era of amazingness, of Batman the Animated Series, of, um, of Biker Mice from Mars, of uh, SWAT Cats, of Transformers, you know? An age where every show, no matter how small and weird, had the 
best intros. Like, Gummy Bears, Gummy Bears have a kick-ass intro song, you know? And MLP was kind of the last of an age. And because of that, because there was nothing to follow it up, it kind of became what they latched onto. It became the final piece of greatness that they remembered. And so obviously they became humongous fans of it. Because MLP, again, for all of its naivete in the way that only a show for girls could possibly be, it's a good show with solid moral lessons. <laughs> Incomparable to today's entertainment, I can tell you that much. The Barrack Revolt. Ferdinand Dornclaw sat in his office, located in one of the innumerable military bases that dotted the capital of the Glyphonian Empire. Ferdinand considered himself a patriot, and in a sense, that was true. He did love the Empire in his own way, a strange way, and it was precisely because of that love that he had rebelled. In his mind, the Empire simply couldn't survive without a radical change in the status quo. Could an already weakened Empire survive with a mere child in charge of the nobles circling around him like vultures? No. Something had to be done. Ferdinand knew that his chance of success was slim, and that he would most likely just go down in history as another nameless traitor to the Empire, a fool whose futile rebellion was quickly crushed. Reports started to trickle in, his forces were converging on the Imperial Palace, and soon they would face the Palace Guard in direct combat. Ferdinand could do nothing but wait and hope that his soldiers could match the ferocity of the hardened defenders that they now faced. The next few minutes would decide the fate of the entire Empire, and by extension, the course of history itself. Alright, well I'm pretty sure I need to crush this to keep my, uh, my strawberry waifu in power, so that is what we shall do. A traitor's death. Ferdinand... <sighs> ah, uh, Kaiser Wilhelm reference there. Ferdinand Dornclaw, one of the Empire's most recent traitors, was publicly executed in the capital today, with the event drawing little attention from the rest of the Empire. Ever since attempting a failed coup several days ago, the Griffin had simply awaited his fate. Once the time finally came to lay judgement down on him, no leniency was taken, and he was found guilty of high treason, as well as conspiracy to commit regicide. There was only one punishment worthy of such evil, and he was sentenced to be hung from the gallows at dawn. The Griffin offered no defense for himself, staying silent through the entire court case, seemingly having accepted his fate. The execution itself was a subdued event, with the scant few military officials and curious onlookers showing up. Of the few Griffin presents at the event, Elias Bronstail was the most senior in rank, showing up out of the little respect that he had for the foolish general. There was no grand speeches or denunciations at the execution. Ferdinand was simply led up to the gallows, and minutes later, he hung dead in the air. In the end, Ferdinand Dornclaw died a mundane death, one which was observed by few. He would be a footnote in history, another mad general driven by a lust for power, an insignificant traitor whose pitiful rebellion was put down before it could even get started in earnest. It was a fitting end. Sad music in the background. He just wanted to help. He just wanted to help. He was just a little bit shit at it. That was all. Uh, come... Well, support. I'll take any support I can right now. Summer Sun Celebration. Ponies through all trots of life have gathered today in Cantalot to witness the Summer Sun Celebration. Originally a holiday made to commemorate Princess Celestia's victory over the feast festering nightmare. Nowadays it celebrated the longest day of the year. Princess Luna returns and the magic of friendship. Not a, not a sound could be heard as the princess climbed on the raised days to took a long gaze on the gathered ponies and proceeded to raise the sun. The crowd watched in amazement at the grand display of the Alicorn's benevolence, and cheering continued long after the sun rose. Festivities continued for the reminder of the day, the spirit of Equestria resonating in the continued showing of respect of her traditions. The Crystal Fair the celebration of Crystal Fair took place in the Crystal City today. Ponies from all around the Crystal Empire gathered to sell their hoof-made goods. Uh. Foodstuffs and drinks. To chat and have fun together. 
A question and Crystal Empire officials paid visit, visit to the fair. Artists, actors and Crystal folk musicians have performed at the event and it ended with Crystal Fair anthems sung by the cloud and fireworks in the night sky. Whew. Well, that's nice, isn't it? Uh, the Romanian Kaiserate. <laughs> um, well, have fun, Romanian Kaiserite, I guess. A calm voice of reason and a dagger in the dark. Let's not forget about our research, shall we? Um, actually, output, docket output. That one. Gerlach's support. Time is of the essence, thought Duchess Gabriella. Her little speech gathered support for her cause, but it was still a co inconclusive. Whom will the council elect for the regency? The next matter to be discussed was the admittance of common-born griffins of some repute to the council, and that simply cannot be allowed. <laughs> Good girl! Eros blatant populism would spell doom for the Empire. If the actual commoners found out about it, and no Griff needs another 1978. Fortunately, the opportunity presented itself. Actually, allow me, chat. There. Right, because uh, I have been reading for 46 minutes now, and I'm wondering if this is entertaining to watch. The Grand Duke of Fethia, 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 I don't even fucking know. Of Fethistan arrived in Griffenheim today, his coming unnoticed by most, as he was fond of travelling incognito. He was set to deliver his speech in the council chambers tomorrow. He was set to deliver his speech in the council chambers tomorrow. I just read that. And while he is a pur pure blood noble, Gabriella suspected that the Archon's lackeys could persuade him to support an inferior cause. He can be irrationally pragmatic sometimes. But the Duchess had her own plan in mind. She will invite him to dine at her Griffenheim estate and take advantage of his fondness for her in order to secure an alliance. Good girl, yes! Yes, I like this girl already, I like her. She uses her fluffy chest to abuse the other people's political position, all in the name of increasing the role of monarchy and nobility. Good. Thus the evening came, the two noble griffins seated in front of each other at the Duchess's opulent dining room. Pleasant chatter was exchanged over a traditional Feristanian feast, with dishes such as snurt and matcha sharing, thankfully. Matcha sharing. He refrained from devouring the fish in a primitive way. It was certainly unbecoming to be seen doing such as Gabriella was about to make a comment on the latest gossips. She was suddenly interrupted by the normally tight-beaked Grand Duke. Lady Eagleclaw, I do not wish to disrespect your hospitality, but I am keenly aware of your invitation's purpose. This came as no surprise to her, as she made a strong effort to flatter his sensibilities. In fact, he gave her an opening to cut straight to the matter at Claw. Forgive me, Grand Duke, but I believe it is within our mutual interest to stand together against the Archons and their wicked schemes. They can't be trusted to rule our legacy. As Gerliac silently considered his options, she, she pressed further. Think, what would Grover want? This got his attention, his eyes gleaming at the memory of the late Emperor. So it is, Duchess, so it is. Tomorrow at the council meeting, Gabriella could only smugly listen to Gerlach's speech, lambasting the Archons for their irresponsible actions. This will certainly draw some of the indecisive nobles to vote for her regency. As his speech drew to a close, she thought about setting up another dinner. The Grand Duke is certain, certainly easy on the eyes. Whoa. Sassy little bitch. Mm. Ah. Gunfox 61. Member for 13 months. Thank you very much, sir. Over a year now. Read Fox Media. Listening to Arch read any lore is always a treat. It looks like chat agrees as well. 83%. Oh boy. Alright. We're continuing to read. Of Things That Never Happened. An interesting book was published today, Of Things That Never Happened, by Harry Solitaire. 
It follows the life of a character simply known as Ross Finn, a Republican terrorist who has been ordered by his superiors to assassinate the Winged Guardian King Umberto. His attempts fail, however, but change the course of history. The Empire never falls, and the revolution of 1978 never takes place as Griffonia prospers. Rosfin begins to question his republican values and eventually becomes a loyal supporter of the Empire. Whilst the premise of the story is rather simple, his writer focuses more on the character of Rosfin and his belief than the actual plot of the story. And some critiques have even pointed out that at times it feels as if the character and the writer are the same person. Nevertheless, the book has been generally warmly received by both commoners and nobles alike. Well, isn't that nice? The Griffonian Frontier. Nova Griffonia. Hold on, this has to do with my sphere of influence. Hmm. Oh, actually, hold on. Let me, um... I don't know if this is official music, but it's good music. This mod has a very, like, listen to that. Like, that is good, isn't it? Like, it's got all of the swelling, it's got the, the, the grandeur, the build. And it's got just, just the tiniest hint of sadness in it too, doesn't it? Oh, shit. Is that the bass, bass holy, holy music? Damn. Is that the normal lost? I swear, I've never heard this in the, uh, the base game. Uh, to be fair, I 98% of the time play with the music off, mind you. It's a, it's a very good one. I really like that one. It's a very, very, very good music. New Daring Do book. After many months of anticipation, A.K. Yearling has finally released Daring Do and the Changeling Spectre, a thrilling espionage action thriller. In this latest entry to the franchise, Daring Do sneaks into Queen Chrysalis's capital, Vesopolis, to find the Queen's Coven's Ark, while being hunted by Queen Chrysalis's agent, the Spectres. After the light-hearted adventure trilogy, many reviewers, like Coldhead, were shocked by the Changeling Spectre's dark tone. Others, like Quibble Pants, welcomed the book's awareness of the current political climate. Daring Do's newfound realism will shiver Pony's spines, but the author's latest entry has lost the escapist element that made her series so great. Still, the book has sold thousands of copies on the first day, and Applewood movie producers have already inquired about film rights. 7 out of 10 stars. Yes, this is a play on uh, J.K. Rowling and Indiana Jones, the Daring Do books, which are in the game. Ah. There's a separate Equestria War music mod, is there? Hmm. <laughs> this visual novel has amazing host. <laughs> it fucking is, isn't it? It fucking is. Ah. Right, no, don't click that button, no. Well, that's gonna complicate matters. Hold on, I clicked the button. I wasn't supposed to click that button. I need to not click that button. Uh... Restore window, thank you. Friends in the Eriite Ir Arcanet. These, these, these names are difficult. Reputation can make or break Griffin. The Dutchers knew this well. Many nobles were left disgraced once the attention of unflattering comments landed on them, regardless of whether there was any substance of truth in them. Sometimes a noble griff simply crossed the wrong pier. Such were the rules of the courtly intrigue, and Gabriella was keenly aware of them, which was why she decided to use the same tactics against the Archons. Although Eros and Proteus were unfortunately too beloved and incorruptible, the same could not be said for the weakest link, Erion.
It was an open secret that he conducted himself in a manner considered shameful by even the priesthood of eerie standards. Gabriella knew just how to exploit this situation. She was a friend of a local priest named Hephaestus, whose advancement was snubbed by Arion plenty of times. She was certain that he will be open to the suggestion of revenge in exchange for an open seat in the Arcanet, once the true order took control. With that, she began writing a letter which would arrive tomorrow in Romau. The following week saw plenty of controversy in Romau and beyond as multiple accusations emerged targeting various high-ranking religious officials. The common griffins were outraged to hear that their aims ended up funding extravagant parties, arms, and... A and worse yet, the talents of abuse committed upon young initiates. Ooh, tales. While many of these stories had few facts behind them, and while Archon still had their claws full on trying to minimize to the extent of the damage, the public opinion swung back in the nobles' favor. Everything was according to Gabriella's plan. Gabriella is doing nice work. Bankers and industrialists. Nida Adel, yes, the young nobles. We require the support of the Nida Adel, the young nobles. Mercen X21 for two dollars. I want to buy this music. Off to work now. See ya. Have a good day at work. Have fun. I know that's a tall, tall, tall order, but try. Nida Adel, the young nobles. The proper conduct of nobility is something every pair understood and upheld. At least that's what the Duchess believed. An ex exquisite upbringing which would translate into a decent member of the high society. Some griff to look up towards. And yet to her eternal embarrassment, most nobles were content to engage in crass displays of debauchery. Oof. The kind that would make a priestess of ear blush in shame. Still, they were smart enough to keep it behind curtains, unlike certain lesser aristocrats. These landless lords would continuously make fools of themselves, clinging to their empty titles and dressing in fashions that went out of style decades ago. Despite being genuine wastes of Boreas given air, Duchess Gabriella found a possible use for them. Despite holding functionally vacuous titles of the land that have been in imperial control for decades, they were still peers, recognized by the imperial court. As such, should a sufficient number present their cause to the Regency Council, there would be no choice but to accept. Gabriella only needed a few more claws on her side to claim the Regency for herself, and despite the distaste for their mockery of their peerage, went forth to persuade a sufficient number. It would be a busy day, but at least she knew where most of them spent their days. It would be a simple matter of what to say and promise, and no guarantee for following on to following on them later on. The following day, at the session of the Regency Council, had an unusual commotion, as a dozen foppish nobles interrupted the session and demanded that their privileges be given and respected. The guards were close to kicking them out onto the street, but the Duchess interrupted, saying that their titles are legitimate. Thus, they joined their colleagues, and when the vote came, they all voted unanimously for Gabriella Eagleclaw. The Archons were furious at being foiled there yet again. Ah, uh, Sweezer Shushwov becomes a British God worshipper. Thank you very much, sir. And Genghis Kek. Fem Stods are real. I'm done with 40k forever. Fem Stodies are real. Well, you might not be the only one. What was it? There was, there was something a little bit interesting that happened uh, the other day. Let's see here. Um... Well, not even the other day. Literally, like... Let's see here. Ah, there we go. Yep. Have a, a little look. Let's see here. Let me find it for you, and I'll show you something a little bit interesting. Da, 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 da. Hmm. Gob. There we go. Games Workshop's stock prices. Look at that. That's weird, isn't it? Hmm. That's odd. Now bear you in mind, a 1% odd dip, or 1.45. It's, it's nothing out of the ordinary. Happens all the time. 
It could simply just be the usual fluctuations of the market. It could have nothing to do with current events. Entirely possible. But it's an odd bit of timing, isn't it? An odd bit of timing indeed. Now, if this keeps going for like, you know, a week, then, then we know. Because right now, this is well within the ranks of statistical anomaly. You know, well within the ranks of statistical anomaly. We will see. We'll keep an eye on it. Bankers and industrialists. The true power in any society, of course, of course. Steel and cement. Right, um... Anything else that's, like, immediately pressingly interesting? Uh, not immediately, so no. Bit of military police would be useful, so let's get that, just in case. The Duchess. Oh, yes, yes. The Imperial Industrialists. As Duchess Gabriella walked through the busy halls of Krastal offices, her thoughts were on legacy. The Empire may last for centuries, or not even a decade. But its culture and achievements will never be forgotten. But where the state comes and goes, its inhabitants are eternal. And more importantly, the money. Great wealth is concentrated within the many companies dotting the business districts of Griffenheim. And she knew that having having their support could change it all. Thus today, she would dedicate her mourning to one known as Seron Grey Talon, the most notable captain of industry in the city. He accepted her invitation for a meeting without hesitation. Of course he does. She is an attractive little birdie, after all. Are you man enough, chat? Are you man enough for pink strawberry bird? Do you have the required testicular fortitude to deal with a woman with claws the size of your fingers? I'd reconsider if I were you. And before she knew it, she was sitting across the business magnet and in his opulent office. My dear Gabriella, what brings you to my humble workplace? Seron started with no hint of irony, chomping on his favourite Golden Griffin cigar, exclusive from Skyfall. I'll need that favour you promised me, Seron. I'll need your support and your colleagues' assistance against the Archons. You know we can't let them take over the state. Great Alan leaned forward, exhaling a whiff of smoke. The Duchess didn't seem to be hazed by it. Your favours don't come cheap, Gabriella. What's in it for me? And for the Krashtal. I guess this is a, a reference to Krupp-Stiel, I guess? I must work for my bread like every other griffin, you know. The ever-predictable Seron and his greed. You'd think he, he had made enough in his lifetime, but some were never content. Tax breaks, subsidies, exclusive government contracts, and we won't nationalise your factories like the Archons would. They'd probably give it all to the peasants, too. Ooh, communism. I have chosen correctly. Gabriella could practically hear the sound of idols clinking in Sarion's head. I think idol refers to money in this universe, incidentally. I know that's useful. Mm, no. Her offer would clearly improve his next quarterly report. Then I believe we have an outstanding deal, my dear. The industrialist of the Empire will stand by your side. Claws were shaken, pleasantries were exchanged, and a proposal for expansion of a middling business was drawn up. Primarily for the purpose of putting a good impression on the less fortunate. Of course, the Duchess returned to her Griffenheim Manor, another piece of a plan put in motion. It wouldn't be long until she had everything she needed. Isn't she just a good little grill? Isn't she just a good little conniving, manipulative grill? Who doesn't like good little manipulative grills, huh? Everybody likes a good manipulative little grill. 
press censorship? Mm. Come on, dear civilian trains. Building slot. And none of that is immediately necessary. Oh, well, Nova Grifonia beat the shit out of them quickly enough. Let's see. Um, well, partial mobilization first and foremost. Absolutely. We're looking for war. If not today, then tomorrow. If not tomorrow, then the day thereafter. Meeting the Emperor. Grover, my child, could you please come out of your, your room? The newly minted regent of the Ember Empire, Gabriella Eagleclaw, pleaded once again to the closed door. It was a grand success of politics who have come this far, for sure. And the look on Eros's face was priceless, but Gabriella now had more personal conundrum to deal with. The young Emperor must be protected from things he could not truly understand yet. Where is the daddy? I want my daddy back. Daddy's dead, bitch. Time to come to realization. You're under female rule now. The young Grover sobbed in his chambers. Gabriella could have easily gotten the door open, but she didn't want to force the poor chick. She had the motherly, especially to a griffin who had never had a mother. She had to be she had to be motherly, especially to a griffin who had never had a mother. Grover, I will explain everything if you allow me to come inside. I promise it will be better, she spoke calmly and slowly. The little scheme was a success, and the doorway slowly opened. Gabriella did not have a moment to observe. The inside before she was pounced on by her weeping nephew. Quickly she embraced Grover and placed a claw on his head, comforting as best as she knew. M Auntie Gabby, why can't Daddy come back? He was okay some time ago. It's been fucking months, child. His body's been rotten for quite some time at this point. No Griff relished the experience of death. Gabriella thought inwardly, My dear nephew, your father was strong and wise, but he is in a better place now, which means you are the emperor now, and I will be your regent. Reject? <laughs> what is that? It means I will be handling all your more difficult duties until you grow up and become a proper adult. Your father would have wanted so this. He was a very dear friend to me, too. Okay, but I still miss Daddy. Oh, don't worry, we can lock you in the same crypt if you don't behave. We all do, but we cannot spend all day crying. There's much work left to be done. Would you like to come with me to the throne room now? The little emperor eyes brightened at the mention of the throne room. Gabriella knew he was very fond of the rich decorations. All right, I think I'm ready to go now. Very good, my child. Make yourself presentable and we'll get going. Mm. And now, energy bar. Hmm. 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 We'll begin with that one. Boogs has embraced the shooter arch. Be his new mummy. Genghis Keck embraced the Ara Ara. And Sandu. Arch, I came across a tidbit of history that the mining unions in the Soviet Union was the one group the Stalin couldn't outright bully and control. Well, he needed them, didn't he? The Imperial Banquet. The Imperial Banquet is an ancient Griffonian tradition that dates back to the glory days of the Empire. Every ten years, nobles from all corners of the Empire would assemble at the capital of Griffenheim to spend one, sometimes even two, joyful evenings together. This helped strengthen our ties with the many dukes and princes of the Empire and allow the Emperor to improve relations with them. The next banquet is scheduled in just a few weeks, but our court is unsure about the exact procedures, considering our weakened hold yes, over the continent. Question. 
fire is the It is answer. unsure whether we should invite only those nobles still loyal to the Empire, or whether we should extend the claw to all who once were under our banner as a sign of goodwill. We will not dine with Hell traitors. Fire is the Scum. <laughs> Might cause a minor war, but, you know, conflicts are fun. Wait, can I, um... I can send volunteers now. Okay, okay, okay. So, what am I? I'm... Non-aligned. Non-aligned, really. Hmm. Well, they're communists, so I think I would align better with Sword Son. One division limit, eh? Right, let's send some knights to restore a bit of order, shall we? The first Imperial Expeditionary Army, under the command of whom? Hmm. Augustus Duskwing. Ah, oh, filthy furries. Ah. Oh. Cinevis Changeling. Interesting. Field Marshal Elias Bronstail. Ooh, promising leader. Cecilia Marshtail, it shall be then, because promising leader is an amazing thing. Dispatch the Imperial Expeditionary Force immediately. The banquet. The night want went along smoothly. Carriage after carriage arrived in front of the Imperial Palace, the most important of which were greeted by the Regent Duchess, uh, Duchess Gabriela Eagleclaw, and even young Grover VI himself. This banquet was quite clearly one of the smaller ones, and the mood seemed to be sour at first. Soon, however, the memories of all returned to our guests, and the celebration began. Games were played, words were exchanged, jokes were made. At the start of the great feast, the Duchess made a great speech. She spoke of ages long past, and how it was the Empire's duty to carry on and reclaim its legacy and destiny. In the end, three cheers were had for our young Emperor. Oh, really? Oh, well, fuck you then, I guess. You don't want help? Hmm. The Archon's Defiance. After securing a victory for the nobility in the Regency Council and alienating both the Eastern vassals and the three Archons, things were finally somewhat stabilizing in the Imperial Court. Until today, that is. During a regular meeting of the Council, Archons Eros and Prospus promptly denounced Duchess Gabriella and her allies as heathens and traitors, and later left the capital. They were shortly afterwards joined by the Senator of Romus, Rector Magnificus of Yeldum, and the Baron of Angriba. Several hours after these news, they all formally declared their secession from the Empire. Soon news arrived from Aldwingberg as well about the local peasant council refusing to recognize a noble as the regent and formally declared independence. Meanwhile, Catherine remains ominously silent and no one knows what is talking place in those dark marches. My cause for war grows stronger still. Yes, yes. I'm seeing war goals down here. Many, many war goals. For Fourth Cadia, Arch, you should download some mods for Inworld. I already have. I, I will be modding it slowly but surely as more and more mods are eventually being uh, released for that game. Because uh, whilst playing Rimworld Vanilla is an interesting experience, it is definitely far from an ideal experience. Bronze Hill nationalizes imperial assets. Much of Bronze Hill's industrial infrastructure and mining assets are owned and operated by firms based in Griffenheim. This is due to the Imperial Court having a vested interest in overseeing the economy of Bronze Hill for the benefit of its citizens. However, recently there have been talk of nationalizing these assets with claims of mismanagement and that not enough economic is benefit remains in Bronze Hill. If this course of action is allowed to reach its conclusion, this would mean a massive loss of monetary assets by some of our leading firms. Currently, the Imperial Court 
support is divided between approaching this diplomatically and issuing a strongly worded protest against our vassal, and taking a more forceful approach which would see us deliver a militarized reminder of our dominance. They will submit. So now 15, 15, I have lost. Shit. I did remove that because poor little Dev was being like, oh, everyone thinks I'm a communist. I wonder why, Dev. Why does everyone think you're a communist? Oh, and I felt bad for little Dev. Well, little Dev was feeling bad for himself, okay? Speaking of, um, how does this work now? It doesn't, apparently. Do you, uh, yeah, you require political power, not just... Service guarantees citizenship. Not just, uh, bells. Mm hmm. Blue Moon Festival. Today, griffins around the world gather to celebrate the annual Blue Moon Festival. Originating in Griffinstone, this traditional winter holiday is said to be the only time of the year when griffins are nice to each other. Families put aside their feuds for a day and come together to exchange gifts. Decorate their houses and enjoy a delicious meal consisting of griffin scones, a warm eggnog, and gold gruel. Gold gruel? Hmm. Even during wartime, griffins prefer to take a break from the fighting and often granted leave so they can visit their homes. While sharing much in common, the celebration differs from the equestrian Hearts Warming Eve by having a religious connotation, not for commemorating a historical event and lacking theatre place. It is said the festival is a celebration of all griffin gods and divine unity in the pantheon, especially between the three main gods, Boreas, Ir, and Arcturus. Over the year, the Arcanists have tried to push the event to focus on the three main deities alone, but especially in peripheral regions, lesser deities are still venerated. Indeed, different griffin communities celebrate the festivals in different ways, with traditions becoming more exotic the further away from Griffinstone you go. In recent times, the festival's religious importance has eroded and is becoming primarily a cultural event, celebrating the common heritage of griffin kind. Guarantees citizenship. Well, isn't that nice? Hmm. No, 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 Give me a second game, Jesus. I'm eating here. Rock and roll money, you didn't ask my question, Arch. A World War II series when? Um, many, many, many years from now. Many, many years from now, probably. Oh, ponies and changelings. The mornings of Griffenheim tended to be surprisingly peaceful. It seemed that despite all the hustle and bustle of the city, the Griffins still valued their slow mornings, and as such, they tended to become quite alarmed when something out of the ordinary happened. That is exactly what happened that morning, as an equestrian tourist ran desperately through the streets. They are coming! Run! Run! Every pony! Run for your lives! Their screams echoed through the massive streets of the capital and caused quite a stir. Mistakenly, many assumed that treacherous communists had staged an uprising, or that a winged body and commando group had sent to assassinate the Emperor. As the pony ran through the streets, they eventually reached the Imperial Palace where they claimed to have information of a grave security threat. After event eventually screaming their way in, they forced themselves into the Imperial meeting room to speak to, or more likely scream at, the Regent. I'm surprised he got that far. But as they opened the door to the meeting room, the pony fainted out of shock and left the regent and changeling ambassador with the regent had been meeting with quite shocked. After receiving, the pony claimed they had spotted changelings readying for attack and that they could be disguised as anyone. Of course, this all happened in front of the changeling ambassador. The pony was shortly escorted out and told to be more tolerant and friendly to other races. <laughs> Brilliant. How rude indeed. 
Winter Moon Celebration. A recent innovation proposed by Princess Twilight Sparkle, the Winter Moon Celebration is a new holiday aimed to spread awareness of Princess Luna and her wonderful night. The princess has chosen to host her event in Manhattan, known for its ponies that never sleep. To her surprise, the response was larger than she expected, with ponies from all over Equestria wishing to see the mysterious Diarc. Flustered by the kindness shown, Princess Luna thanked all of them for attending and wished for unity and friendship in the coming harsh winter moons. As the princess worked her magic, the ponies were awed at the night sky, its beautiful beauty becoming all the more apparent with the constellation showing in full view and the light of the moon showering the cloud. The revelry continued late into the night and the princess herself was seen mingling with the ordinary ponies as well. Princess Luna! Best princess. No doubt about it. No questions remain. Best Luna. Best princess. <laughs> Train faster. Hmm. I have a surplus of guns. Interesting. No more coins from Skyfall. Today, unlike previous years, the Imperial Foreign Affairs didn't receive any letter from Skyfall, at least none containing any coins. It seemed that after the demise of Chancellor Guichard, the new leader of Skyfall had little interest in pursuing his peculiar form of humour. The Panishes of Sikamion joins the Concordat of Free Nations. Earlier today, the Republic of Astorian and the Panishes of Sikamion issued a joint statement that the latter have now been formally granted membership status of the Concordat of Free Nation. Whether this partnership will be used for offensive or defensive purposes remains to be seen, but undoubtedly extensive joint military planning is already underway. <clears throat> Oh, did you, um... Okay, they beat the knights, so now it's just the communists against the supremacists. Vasily Vitin elected General Secretary. This morning, Vasily Vitin was sworn in as General Secretary of the Stalingrad Communist Party in a short ceremony held in the Supreme Soviet. The former Prime Minister is a staunch believer in the socialist ideals and is expected to continue the current collectivist politics. Disgusting. Mm -hmm. Ooh, civilian factories. Yes. That. That immediately. The Second Aquilian Revolution. The Kingdom of Aquilonia, for the second time in recent history, is embroiled in a revolutionary turmoil. The so-called Second Aquilonian Revolution. Republican and Communist supporters have managed to quickly overwhelm, apprehend, or eliminate loyalist forces in several regions, throwing the country into chaos. The Republican is fiercely opposed by the monarchist supporters who have sworn to destroy the revolutionary spirit once and for all. The Republic braced itself for the coming storm, ready to defend and their ideals and values to the death. Well, have fun with that. Right, more... Bronze Hill reaffirms loyalty to Griffenheim. The Bronze Hill representatives have officially confirmed they stand with us, which is a welcome sign of the crisis we face. As such, we must not turn the blind eye to their loyalty, since there is value in unity. Their deeds are noticed they have earned a gift from the Empire. Good doggies. Fine little wankos you are. Oh, hello. Uh, Duchy of Vignons. Again, nobody really wants to get any expeditionary forces, do they? I really don't. I really don't. Samuel Eddy. I don't care what you do, so long as your actions cause horrible pain to as many rainbow points as possible. Well... Thank you for my your fate and my ability to hurt ponies. 
I intend to. Service guarantees citizenship. Hmm. Economy. No. Mm. Almost done. Eating, that is. For the inability of the Rome Romao City Council to restore order, the Archon himself has stepped in and taken direct control, supported by the religious fanatics and loyal Erite knights. With his help, the Romao authorities were able to put down the mass riots and protesters. To ensure that peace and stability remains, Archon Erion has disbanded the Senate and formed a government of his own, which he promises to be temporary, albeit few believe him. The council lost the battle, and Archon Erion now rules the city of Romana. Mm. Power hungry clergy. How rare. Hello there, horse. Um, suffer in my dungeons, please. Hmm. Hmm. That's good. I like that. The Republic of Tarion declares independence. After the collapse of the Griffonian Empire and the Aquilian, Aquilian Revolution, many countries had declared independence, with the last one being the free territory of Adelart, which broke free from the country of Glyfwall in 987 ALB. In the years since, the number of nations on Griffonia had not grown until now. The Republic of Tarin, the western half of the country, county of Francistria, has now declared independence. The region has long been in turmoil with her with the resistance movement of FLNT fighting against the Francistrian so garrison. Now they are one, but it remains to be seen how long their newborn nation will last in these tumultuous times. Psycho Star, just wondering, what is the game plan for Kenshi? Well, the game plan will be probably to ask chat what chat wants to do. Does chat want to build a city? We can build a city. Does chat want to be traders? We can be traders. Do chat want me to hire as a slave? We can do that too. And we'll see what chat wants, I guess. With the official capitulation of the last monarchist supporters, the Aquilian Republic celebrates their victorious revolution once again. The dis discretes have either fled or been captured, and the Republic is now firmly established with the recent passing of Marshal Berthelon, a counter-revolution seems unlikely. The future of the Republic remains uncertain, however, as the temporary alliance of Communists and Republicans break apart in the light of the upcoming first general election. The Aquilians and the world around them now ask themselves what the future holds for the Republic. Well, subversion, that's what it holds. See. Y you're not going to be able to co-rule with communists. Communists view their entire ideology as the long march throughout history. They're not going to stop. They're not going to just go like, Oh, well, we had an election, we lost. No. They believe their nonsense to be the only possible future. Thus, they're not going to stop. They're just going to launch a revolution against you. You have become nothing more than the useful allies they used to overthrow the previous regime. Changelings claim Olenia. Queen Chrysalis, best bug pony, has sent an urgent request to the King of Olenia, King Yervelin Johan Jeslek, to provide full military access into Olenian territory and become a protectorate state of changelings. Queen Chrysalis says that Olenia is located in a strategically important position and surely in changeling sphere of interest. Equestrian officials say that these claims are outrageous and threaten to sanction changeling queendom and install strict border control. King Djervelin Johan Jazek has not yet released an official response. Kill them. Kill them, little changelings. Kill them. They are gay and Finnish. 
In a valiant display, Olenia has today rejected the ultimatum sent by Queen Chrysalis, demanding territorial concessions. King Yervelin, Johann Jeslek, has found these claims to be outrageous and an insult to Olenia and the solidarity of its people. Chrysalis and her regime has yet to make a public statement on this matter, but many, including the Olenian military and King Yervelin, Johann Jeslek, are expecting them to be more worried about military planning than diplomacy now. What will this breakdown of negotiations mean for Alenia and Equestria? Will the peace be kept, or will the changelings put a premature end to Alenia? We shall see how this situation develops. Kill the fence. Kill the fence. Also, by the way, you see this? You see all of these icons in the map? They wrote law for every single mumping city. In the entire- oh, well, not that much here down here, so there you go. For every single mumping city on, like, two continents, the people that made this mod were insane. I'm just saying. The new knights are done. Okay, get to training, lads. Deal with the bureaucrats. You're under noble rule now, shitlibs. Monarchy. Monarchy uber alles. I'm done eating. Ah, monarchy. The solution to all of our problems. We need more monarchy. We need to have nothing but monarchy. Monarchy must reclaim its rightful place as absolute unquestioned rulers of humanity. It is the only way we can deal with the filthy, dirty, communist pigs. And their territorial disgusting ways. Monarchy chat. Monarchy, not democracy, is the future. Reject the soft, effeminate ways of voting. And embrace tradition. And, occasionally, sometimes, the opportunity to change your government not via a pathetic, weak, flimsy piece of paper but with papal arms and God on your side. Do you want tanks? I probably do want tanks, to be fair, but I don't want line tanks. I want medium tanks, so screw that. Mm, logistic companies are good. The Grand Galloping Gala. The annual ball is held at Cantalot Castle tonight. Royal family, higher ranks of equestrian government, and friends are gathering at the event to enjoy the evening and discussing political issues. Fancy drinks and classical music were accompanied it through the night. The ball was ended with splendid fireworks display. Equestria does not fail to support her tradition. Well, for too many ponies, this is an assurance of stability and prolonged peace in good old Equestria. The fall of Weyverfront as the changeling panzers move forward to destroy the pathetic Finns. Reports from early this morning tell of changeling forces overrunning the Olenian capital city of Weyverfront, clearing out the last defenders desperately holding on to the city's port. Hundreds of thousands of Olenian civilians have been pouring out of the city by hoof or by ship. Though it was too late for many as changeling tanks caught up them and blocked off every escape route. The city, once a hotspot of radio traffic, has now gone early silent, with only celebratory music and speeches being transmitted by Opikai op occupying changeling forces in the city. Good, Queen Chrysalis. March forward. Crush the filthy, dear, disgusting monsters. Olenia surrenders. The changeling war against Olenia did not go for a very long time. Having no help or backup plan at their side, realizing the defeat is inevitable, King Johann and his ministers decided to peacefully surrender before it was too late, to save the dear nation from unnecessary losses. Changing forces are going to enter Olenian capital this evening. The population is forced to wave changing flags and to participate in the parade that is going to be held tomorrow. Good. March the, ch the changeling troops down the Champs Elysees, singing all the while. It is the only way. 
Right. Hmm. I'm wondering how much time I have. Because I know everybody around me is kind of breaking into smaller and smaller f fucking nations. So I'm kind of thinking I've probably got enough time to just, you know, build and be happy. So I think I shall. Strawberry joining the Net Empire. I like the sound of that. Let's see. Ooh, silent work, but yep, 15% political power. Always pick that. Always pick that. It's it's too good not to pick. Uh, tr civilian trains. You know what? I would not mind a little bit of civilian train production. I would not. I wouldn't mind some trucks either. Right, I guess let's get a little bit of truck production going. Don't have any rubber, but that's fine. We're only producing like one truck anyway, so meh. The Imperial Literacy Campaign begins. Hmm. A synthetic refinery would not be the worst idea ever. While Grow the Fifth did much to improve literacy rates within the Empire, his work was left unfinished by his unfortunate and untimely death. Now that order has been established and a determined regent leaves the nation, we can continue where he left off. Literacy campaigns have been initiated and education reform ex reformed extensively, with many new teachers hired, especially from Yale. Schools are being built across the country and will be available for every Griffin regardless of class. While all this is a drain on the coffers, it will ultimately be worth it as an educated populace is a productive populace. Largely correct. Though... Our education system requires a mass overhaul as well. Mm, yes. Alright, Beariot. Okay, head towards unification and... Um, hmm. I don't like any of those. Reinhold Thundertail, it shall be thou. I wish for armor to lead us into the future. Armor shall be the herald of monarchism. The clatter of tank treads, the final herald of a better world order. Stalingrad and Our Town. Our Town, also known as Starlight Village, is a place in most northern part of Equestria. Locked between the Griffin Colony and Stalingrad, commonly known for being magically enslaved by Starlight Glimmer, best pony, forcing the population to give up their special talents. Ponies of the region adopted socialism based on example their neighbor Stalingrad. And all the years since Starlight's retreat, the region was formerly under the protection of Stalingrad Republic. There were heated debates in Stalingrad, Soviet, and whether Stalingrad can afford adjoining our town to their state. But since the election of Vasily Wheaton, it became clear that the independence of Starlight Country country has passed to history. Yesterday, the ponies of our town became rightful citizens, citizens of Stalingrad. Perhaps together, they will seek a better future. Oh, I doubt it. Hmm. The only thing that is constant with socialism is that it has no future. Uh, knights, definitely. I do like knights. Priven Civil War's End, Socialist Union. After nearly four years of bloody fighting in the fields of Priven, the Civil War ends with the Communist Revolutionaries claiming the victory. Oh. The countries they've devastated him will take many months for the Griffins to rebuild their homeland. The fate of Broadfeld royal family and the future of Privens Griffins is now in the claws of Philip Redglad. Their neighbor neighbors are worrying about this turn of events. Today, Vasily Vitin and his Supreme Soviet announced that they are creating an international organization, Socialist Union. They are going to seek support of communist nations all across the world for mutual protection and cooperation. Mutual dictatorship, you mean, surely. Eh, hey, that one. Right, unite the nation. Come on, Strawberry Duchy, become mine. 
I desire Pink Waifu to become part of Glorious Archie Stan. Together we shall become larger Pink Waifu thing, yes. Together we shall grow vast, you and I. Fuel silos? I don't think we're going to be needing those anytime soon. What's my, um... Uh, not... Not great. Let's build up one level there, actually. And one level there, too. And then we can get to start on more military factories. A strange day in Griffenheim. The Imperial Director for Internal Security was not a happy Griffin. He rarely was, as the Imperial Capital is a hotbed of assassination plots to overthrow the government and foreign spies. And as such, his position was not an enviable one. But today was proving to be particularly difficult, as he sat in his office questioning a new hire about the recent debacle in the capital. Apparently, the problems had started earlier that morning, when gunfire could be audibly heard from one of the many abandoned buildings in the outskirts of the capital. After a team was sent to investigate, the site was discovered empty, save for hundreds of bullet casings. Strangely enough, it seemed that both sides had used guns of the same make. It was not long after that an undercover officer reported in, stating that during his infiltration into one of the many ba banking cabals that control the capital, he had been part of the event that morning. It seems that during a meeting with the other members, they encountered changeling spies, who had apparently decided to utilize the same building as a meeting spot. What followed was a short gunfight between the two sides, realizing that, as per the weapons, they worked for the same employer, and promptly stopped shooting at each other. Well, that's nice. Said employer was in actually a front set up by the Ministry of Internal Security and was apparently supposed to provide insight into the criminal world of Griffenheim. This had come as a surprise to the director as he had no records of ever supplying any changelings, though through that particular front. He ultimately chalked it up to the bureaucratic nightmare that is the capital, but it seemed that somehow he was responsible. In the end, only one decision was made. Whatever he did, he sure as Tartarus wasn't about to do it again. Zero Firewater for $10 over on Rumble. Thank you very much. Archley, who is the best main six? And Pony Kenshi. Who's the best main six pony? Kenshi, right? Let me just add that to the uh, Kenshi fund as well. There you go. The best main six. Hmm. Um. Let's do that one now, because I need the manpower. So I'm presuming, since we're saying main six, we mean original main six. So, oh, wow, I grew large all of a sudden. Oh boy, Misa big. Oh, Misa. Misa fucking huge all of a sudden. Nice. I enjoy being massive. I enjoy being gug. Anshuan. Okay, okay, okay. Right, um, you boys, relocate. Let's see. Some of you are going to need a little bit more in the way of a workout. The rest of you will require some reorganization as well. Apparently a lot of you were using really terrible weapons. Ah, Hinterlandbuch. Yes, we were actually using muskets, you see. Oh God, what, what have I, what have I taken into my nation now? Well, mostly indigent retards, it turns out. Ah, uh, well, you know, uh, sometimes, sometimes you've got to embrace the, the underprivileged as well. I do suppose, even if one should resist doing so at every possible turn. Readwater Radio House, Electronic Research Speed, Production Effort, ooh, not bad. Refining Concern. 15 plus Electronic Research is tempting, but, you know, this mod we only have a, we only have a tiny bit of Electronic Research, so... Service guarantee citizenship. Production Efficiency is going to be more effective in the long run. All right. That really supercharged my uh, my industrial base. That really 
really, really helps the industrial base, no doubt about it. Very nice, very nice. Um, rarity. It's got to be rarity. It has to be rarity. Okay, it's got to be rarity. Rarity is the pony of my heart, okay? She speaks posh, okay, just like me. Question. She uses oh, magic, yes. which is obviously the <laughs> best thing. She's a pretentious snob, yet has a heart of gold. Yep, it's got to be rarity. It has to be rarity. It's got to be. No doubt about it. Plus, she cries frequently. <laughs> which is funny, too, okay? Uh, <laughs> it's Applejack, UT Jen. No! No, Applejack is too basic. Sandoom, no, it's Rainbow Dash, you round pounder. No, right, no, no. See, I thought Rainbow Dash would be my favorite too. Because, like, Rainbow Dash, basically a tomboy pony. Mm, sort of. See, the problem is Rainbow Dash is also actually patently retarded. Which makes her difficult to like. Gotta be rarity. Must be rarity. No doubt. The Republican Dream. A few days ago, one of the most famous modern-day authors in the Grafonian Empire, Friedrich Winger, released his newest book called The Republican Dream. In the book, Winger looks back at the Republican Revolution inside the Grafonian Empire. He makes an effort to not only teach history, but also attempts to show that some of the Republican thoughts were quite progressive for the time, and that they could still be valid and necessary additions to imperial society today. After harsh backlash from the public, Winger once again clarified that he supports the crown and that he does not affiliate himself with the Republic in any way. The book has so far been a moderate success in the Empire itself, but saw even greater success in the countries such as Aquilia. No shit. Mm. Listen, some reform can be desirable, can even be necessary, in fact. But reform must be careful. Hmm. Mofos. I do like the name Mofos, though. Motherfuckers. Hmm. <laughs> Better. Hard Mofos. Aquilian operative captured. Corthage denounces the Sumidian mandate. Zarathai Zarka, suffret of Carthage, Carthage, gave a speech on the Senate floor today denouncing the Sumidian Mandate as an imperialist Fire affront to civilization. The speech was broadcast live over hippogriff controlled Zumidia and coincided with a large scale exercise of the Carthaginian army and navy on the western border. Oh, quinky dinky winky. The Hippogriff government reacted to the provocation by giving facts about the security and economical boom in the Mandate territory, calling the suffrage out of control and dangerous. In a reaction to the exercise, more forces have been sent to Zemidia by Aris and internally observers are warning that the situation might escalate irreversibly if a compromise is not reached. Also, 200 Czechy bucks from Roman Heinrich with no message attached. Thank you very much for the donation, sir. Uh, support of the Rice Army. Uh, organization, planning speed, that one can wait. Uh. Right, only two more, three more, then we can actually start going to war, can we? Good. Right, what is my actual military might looking like? Let's see here. We've got the Order of Imperial Knights. Of course, we'll follow, we'll uh, coalesce those under the Imperial Expeditionary Army for the time being. So we have five divisions of Imperial Knights. Imperial Knights are three divisions of Knights, just Knights. Uh, they could use some... Uh, they could use some combat support, couldn't they? What's their speed? Four. Yes. Definitely slap some artillery in there. There. They will be the hammer blow. Imperial Knights. Hmm. 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 Imperial Knights. I do like the model there. Attach a logistic company to them as well. Imperial Guard Divisions, Support Artillery, Engineer Company. 
slap on logistic company and a I like um, no, no that's fine for now Right. Convert all follow on forces to Imperial Guard divisions, naturally. Heresy is the question. Fire is the answer. <laughs> and these will all be Imperial Knights. Good, okay. That's probably gonna it did ravage the shit out of my artillery stockpile, but I actually had enough to upgrade all of them, which is quite sweet. And as for armor, I have a few divisions of armor. Three, three armored divisions. Let's see, what do they make up? Brian H. 19, 1988 Arch! Chant claims you're a brony! What's your response? You cannot be a brony. You're not allowed to be. I am something more, something special. Something raised above mere bronydom. You may call me an uber brony, yes. I am no mere fascist, I am an uber fascist. Wasn't that the defense of uh, Umberto Echo? <laughs> I am an uber brony, yes. In fact, I'm insulted you'd uh, call me something so base as a mere brony. Unironically, that was Umberto Echo's defense. See, Umberto Echo, often referred to as the father of fascism, and Heresy. yeah, yeah, in large, large parts Heresy. he was. <laughs> um, he was accused after the war of being a fascist. <gasps> Gasp, how could it be? How could the father of fascism be accused of such a thing? Well, um, it became very illegal, of course, back then to be a fiaschist because of the whole, like, you know, the whole war thing. It, it made the brand less desirable, shall we say. Significantly so. What's the... Ah, oh, the command level is 24. Uh, Augustus Duskwing seems like the obvious example here. Yep. All right, so I'd like at least five more divisions of Imperial Guard, if at all possible. Yep, that will somewhat push my uh, my my pony power to its limits, but I'm I'm within I'm within levels there. So he was put on trial, and his entire defense was that he was not a fascist. He was nothing so halfway as a fascist. He was a super fascist. And therefore, the accusations of him being a fascist were obviously incorrect. I always enjoyed the sheer balls on display there. Uh, 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 uh. Web of lies, yes. Let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see. What else? Um, ba bum 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 anti-partisan i will be needing that eventually uh, speaking of you're not no you're, you're not rebelling i figured I, I i was wondering if they would maybe like did not a part of me and they were angry with me they are not they're actually entirely fine with me being here good and he was found to be correct indeed he was not a fascist he was a super fascist and therefore all charges against him were obviously dropped as they should have been of course of course friendly preacher the Eisen Adler. Ooh. Operative slots plus one. Fuck yes. Operative slots are rare and hard to come by. Definitely that one. I have a stupid amount of basic light tanks, which I don't think I need. Especially as I'm not really that enthused with light tanks, if I'm to be honest. I'd rather have more motorized units. Speaking of, how's my research for synthetics going along? Uh, very, very slowly. Okay, well. Slowly, but surely. Uh, that, that guy, Guy Gus, Arch, incoming news, the most evil German ever born, Klaus Schwab, is in the hospital, and rumor is critically ill. Thoughts? My thoughts and prayer go with the Grim Reaper this day. <laughs> 
What can I say? It's Klaus Schwab. Uh, Zero Firewater. Which villain had the best first appearance? My personal favorite is Discord and Kenshi. Hey, right, let me add another 10 buckaroonies to the Kenshi go. In fact, you've donated loads previously. I'm presuming yeah, well, there's an ad. Yeah, well, bones from me, too. Uh, best villain initial appearance. Now, Discord has the most impactful one. I can hardly disagree with that. Definitely. No doubt about it. But I think best villain... Hmm. See, you asked for best villain appearance, at which point I can't really disagree with Discord, seeing as he was the big bad guy appearing in the painting, etc. First Punzer division, I see Fairman's been here. But I always, like, best villain is, uh, is has, has, has got to be. Oh, what's this? Oh, this is that new mechanic thing that actually isn't in Black Eyes. Oh, okay. All right. Um, boy, how to engage with that then? Three civilian factories. Well, how far away? Seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirty-four, fifteen. I'm like two full stacks, if at all possible. Uh, Blö Blautel Waffenhaus. Blöutel Waffenhaus. Infantry equipment. Okay. Heavy anti-armor ammunition, hard attack piercing, uniform stock, soft attack, reliability, drum pattern sights, defense. Arm piercing rounds, piercing hard attack, small arms bullet design, soft attack breakthrough. Anti-vehicle landmines, medium machine gun protection, breakthrough. Refine stocks. A breakthrough is like the most important stat in the game, basically, as far as I'm concerned. So that is the one we're gonna go for. Mechanics on duty. Arch, femmarines or pony marines? Can she? Obviously, femmarines are gay. And should be a, a rejected at all cost. So it's going to have to be Pony Marines. Pony Marines all the way, every day. Yes. Alright. With three plus. Nice. Begin building one of those. It's going to take for actually ever. But that's fine. I do need the rubber. And plus three is pretty damn generous, honestly. Now, the medium tank is one and a half years away, so let's start getting working on some armor, I guess. Ooh, cool. Uh, Griefswagen. A research bonus, 10. Oh, I... I didn't mean to do that. Uh, <laughs> no, I wanted to see what they did first. Okay, well, I've, I guess I've picked now, then. Right. Another pony operative. Scientist, I will take. Right, you kind of need at least three operatives, in my opinion, before it's worth trying to do anything with them. Um, is there anything that increases them here? Uh, but I'm certainly was probably a loader after the fifth upgrade and after signing elusive gentle being advisor. So five upgrades. Okay. Right. Very well. In which case we're obviously going to get the cryptology department up and running because that's pretty gosh darn important as well. Uh, artillery. The Buffalo Chiefsum, Equestrian Region. The infamous Buffalo State has existed as an enclave state within Equestria for decades now. Proud Buffalo Chiefs did not accept... ...ruining? ...ruining and exploiting of their... ...ruining and exploiting of their soul by pony farmers. However, many experts doubt the state was truly independent as they fully relied on equestrian trade. The situation has changed in recent Since years as a new buffalo it. leader rose to power, Chiefess Strongheart. She was known for her warm attitude towards the ponies. As follows, she accepted Princess Celeste's offer of friendship, and today, the integration of Buffalo Since State as an autonomous region of Equestria was finished. All buffaloes are going to receive full citizenship and farming subsidies. Good. Crush the buffaloes. Fuck the buffaloes.
our friends the Grief Waldians. Count Claudette of Griefwald, who has recently sent a diplomatic mission to Griefenheim, has seen it fit to propose that we help further the economic ties by opening trade between the Empire and this small nation, citing how much it would curb Aquilius' influence in a region. What should we do? I don't know. Ca Claudette of Greifwald. Of Greifwald. Greifwald. I have no idea where Greifwald is. That's the problem. Ah, there we go. I don't know. I don't like the flag. It looks a little bit too progressive to me. I kind of hate your flag. Hmm. Well, if it will annoy the Republicans, I suppose we'll accept. If it will piss off the enemies of monarchy, then it is probably a good thing. I'm suddenly getting a lot more fuel, which I uh, I quite do enjoy. The question. Fire is the answer. <laughs> All right, we're getting very close to war now. Then I'm going to need to start looking into what exactly war means. Comet sighted. Oh, hello there. Hello there, joke of ancient Europe EU for Europe and other sound's origins. Why do I have so many stupid griffins in my nation? That is a great question. Uh, radio intercept group. A long day in Veta. Chaos consumed the Griffin colony as today on a warm summer day, Governor Tfeder was shot upon the stairs of his manor. Okay, uh, that nice and calm picture did not ex did not prepare me for that. Unfortunately, the assailant managed to escape before the police could arrive, and without a scapegoat to blame, the Griffins turned on each other. The long-standing tensions between the communists, the harmists, and the fascists exploded, and the streets ran red with Griffin blood. By the time... Excuse me. By the time the military and police force managed to store some semblance of order to the country, thousands of griffins lay dead. After a long and bloody day, every griffin had but one simple question. What happens next? Sean P. So, fun note, Arch. I work in polyurethane molding, making synthetic rubber parts. Bosses asked me if I knew how the craft came about. I did indeed. I do not, but I expect it has something to do with the war effort. And Sand Doom, Pony Marines already exist, called Krieg Mounts. You know, that's not that far from the truth. Oh, radios, nice. I am entering something that resembles civilization. Let's get some engines too. I mean, uh, some of our turret, advanced shell design, truck engines, aircraft engines. Advanced shells, power traversal round. Oh, okay, so they're basically the same thing. Okay, in which case, just put all of it. I do like the addition of design bureaus. That's a nice addition to Hearts of Iron. It hasn't made its way into Black Ice yet, though I am sure it will. Oh, boy. The River Republic is growing larger, is it? Disgusting. Anti... Anti-monarchist uh, coalitions. I do hate anti... So in fact, users, uh, do you look about, oh, do you look about, okay, I should, I should be starting to research that then. I hate the anti-monarchists, I hate them, I hate them, I hate them. As all people should. Space armor, yep, keep going with it. Hates them, I do, hates them, hates them, hates them. New Kaiserlich Marine, Rebuilding Pierre Force, the Reich Army Expansion Plan. Modern industrial methods, hundreds of industry, nice. Now, I think it's time for a little bit of war, though. I, I wanna, I wanna start taking shit. I wanna start taking stuff. I wanna take stuff. Subjugates the peasant. The peasant republic of Greifenmarschen. Peasants? Peasants? In my nation? Where? There? Whoa. Disgusting. Subjugate. Immediately. The 
deploy the Imperial Knights. They're the only ones with sufficient anger and vengeance and vehemence to be relied upon to not leave so much as a single hovel standing. We must, with great determination, make sure that none of these filthy peasants are allowed to exist. Oh, I see that thing still going. Mm. I wish I remember how to make it keep the thingy de bob. It made it so much easier to control all of the units. They do have quite a lot of dudes, so we gotta make sure we guard our border properly, of course. At least the traitorous peasants try something gay. The rest of you will remain in reserve in Greifenheim and De Velugis. My surprise, my supplies are good enough for government work. More civilian factories, more riches, more wealth inside my nation. We must grow larger, more vehement, more assertive. I've got like no air research whatsoever. I'm hoping I'm not going to need it. We'll see. So the firewater again. Worst pony race, Kenshi. Worst pony race. Um, worst pony race. Worst pony race. Worst pony race. Hmm. Earth ponies? Because the earth ponies are just kind of boring. Like, the earth ponies don't really have, like, any special abilities. Like, the unicorns have got magic. The pegasi can fly, obviously. The alicorns and shit are obviously cool. But earth ponies? What What do earth ponies have? Like, earth ponies, like, what What do you have? Like, well, we are uh, tough uh, uh, stuff. Yes, yes. Uh, we are uh, hardy earth ponies. Does that count? Is that good enough? I'm not so sure. Division speed, 5% is nice, but you know what? I actually quite like static warfare, because it just makes it way easier to hold a line. Service guarantees citizenship. Subjugate peasants! Disgusting peasants! Hmm, the riches of strawberry. That one. The Abyss Abyssinia Crisis. The ongoing border dispute between Wing Body and Abyssinia has reached a crisis point on as both sides refuse to step down over the issues the Wing Body and colonist Colony of Catron is seen by the Abyssinian government as an illegal occupation. Recently, it was discovered that Wing Body has built a fort near town Katkak. Katkat, I see. Located in land, Wing Body claimed to have purchased but previously not occupied. A skirmish broke out between the colonial garrison and an Abyssinian police, with both sides blaming the other. The incident has seen spiral out of control and build up of forces on both sides of the border suggest as soon as the dispute deal will soon escalate into an all-out war. Uh, Champy, the Germans invented it. No, it's caused no access to rubber, I figured. Lancelot 652, nice to see DW watching Star Trek, Star Wars, and Marvel Comics self deletion and gladly joining them. I do hope so. And Mr. Desert Frenzy, Arch, have you ever played Valiant Heart, The Great War? Do you know if it's any good? I have not, no, sadly. Oh, were you not? Oh, you're something else. Oh, I thought I thought all of you were that. Oh, so you're not? Service guarantees citizenship. Well, in that case... Oh, don't mind if I just fucking crush your pathetic nation with overwhelming military force, then. Why guard the border when you can simply just march straight across the border? All divisions of the Imperial Guard and the Knightly Households advance, annihilate the peasants, crush their abodes, destroy their houses, their churches, their places of worship, their governmental centers, leave nothing left of their disgusting, unmeritocratic, unaristocratic culture. Is the question. Fire is the answer. 
Uh, don't worry, County of Bronze Hill. I think I've got this. You, you don't need to join in. It's okay. They're, they're just peasants. I think it's fine. Leave the Legion. If you could live as one race in Warhammer Fantasy, which would it be? Uh, Chaos Dwarves, obviously. Yeah, Chaos Dwarves. Chaos Dwarves are cool. I like the Chaos Dwarves. Plus, the Chaos Dwarves do have a reasonable standard of living. You know? They get a lot of other people to do their job for them, and I don't see why that is a bad thing. In fact, I think it's a pretty damn good thing to make sure that other people, you know, commit to a little bit of labor. It's the kibbutz theory, which I've grown very fond of. I, I really like the idea of kibbutzes now, and I kind of wish that we would so all have a kibbutzes. I think kibbutzes are the future as far as I'm concerned. Kibbutzes are great. We need way more kibbutzes in our lives. Right, cut those off right there. Aid in that battle and we will capture ourselves some filthy peasantry. Throw in the Imperial Guard. Casualties are irrelevant. Victory is the only thing that matters. And ours is within easy reach by now. Oh, you're doing the defense order. I do hate the defense order. I really do. It's very meta-y, where you can just be like, Oh, hey, I pressed a button, and suddenly my units just aren't losing organization anymore. Wow, look at that. I do think they take more strength damage or something. In fact, this unit has actually zero strength left, and I'm kind of wondering how the fuck they're still on the field, considering they don't have any soldiers left on the field, but there you go. More military factories, eh? I definitely need to get started on some aircraft development very soon. I definitely do. Converted tractor engines. That was indeed one of the earliest ways in which they began figuring out armor. The Germans had, of course, quite, uh, quite famously, been forbidden to engage in any sort of armored research. They were not allowed to have tanks at all. They were forbidden for it. And so Germany, realizing that tanks would be pretty useful in the next big war, instead entered into an agreement with the Soviet Union to share military technology and allow Germany to test out various forms of uh, tanks and tank strategies within the Soviet Union, thus allowing them to kind of circumvent the various uh, treaties labeled upo placed upon them. Uh, both sides took great advantage of the uh, of the job, honestly. They, uh, they benefited tremendously, both of them. But one side was a lot more honest than the other. Uh, weirdly enough, it was the Germans who were the most honest part. Primarily because, well, they didn't really have anything to lose, frankly. They didn't really have much to hide. Uh, because they didn't have anything. So it's like, okay, well, you know, um... What can I say? I, uh, I I guess this is all we got. Uh, whilst the Soviets were looking at the German nonsense, like the Leich tractor, and were thinking to themselves like, filthy fucking Germans are lying to us. They got bigger shit than this. Because the Soviets had bigger shit than that. They were showing the Germans stuff like the, the BT-5 and the T-26, whilst they were working on the KV-1 T-34 in the background. Which later on came as quite the surprise to Germany, of course, as uh, they genuinely expected the, um, the Soviets to not be that far ahead of them in terms of tank technology. That was an unfortunate surprise for them. Breakthrough. Always, always breakthrough. Breakthrough, breakthrough, breakthrough. Breakthrough is the only stat that matters, it is. Good job to the Imperial yes, Army Sebastian. and the Imperial Fire Household and his knights. <laughs> a quick war is a good war. Yakamura, it's now a good time to say pony up. It is a good time to say that, yes, now. It's, it's the best time you could possibly imagine. Yes, yes, lots of new beautiful, beautiful little factories for me to use and abuse, yes. The might of Griffonia is growing rapidly. Speaking of, do I have a fleet? I do have a fleet. Wow. I've even got a carrier. 
HGHS Falcona and a couple of really ancient, sad-looking battleships. Okay, well, Griffonia is not going to be a naval power anytime soon then, but hey, you know, we're working on it, we're working on it. Right, I should get some aircraft up and running. Um, heavy machine guns, let's get some heavy machine guns. Adler Luftfahrt, that's a good name. Carrier Cass Airframe, Fighter and Carrier Fighter. Agility, max speed. Agility, max speed, air attack. Well, that sounds pretty, pretty swell to me, honestly. Yeah, uh, 5%. Actually, it's something better. 10%. 5%. Oh, Adler Luftfahrt, it is then. Uh, Greifswagen. I. Did I give you anything? I guess I did. Uh, defense, then. Mr. Fancy, Art, for future reference, how big of a bribe does a chat need to pony up in order for you to stream a game? Uh, depends on the game. If I think it's something that chat will want to watch, uh, like this, which is being watched quite, <laughs> quite eagerly right now, um, then I'll give it to you for relatively cheap. You know, uh, relatively speaking. For something like Kenshi, uh, which is at a thousand bucks, is because I don't think people will watch it. <laughs> That's why. And thus, the ad revenue will be severely reduced, as will donations. This is a, a cold, calculating, capitalist maneuver on my side, I'm afraid. Uh, because Kenshi is a very specific, hardcore, niche game, and so if people don't want to donate for it now, they're not going to want to donate for it at the time, you know? And Kenshi is a long game. That's another thing, too. I gave Angre his stream of Hi-Fi Rush basically for paying for the thumbnail and buying the game because one, Angre was donating to it himself and made me feel bad, and two, it was a short game. So like, okay, you know, it'll, it'll be it'll be one and done. My hourly wage will be pretty good, you know. So it depends on the game. You'll have to like just suggest it to me, and uh, we can help with something. Sundoom, did the Soviets ever engage the Japanese in World War II? Yes, they did. Uh, they did in um, uh, Manchuria, and what was the name of that dumb island in the northern part of Japan? The tiny one with the oil on it. Karelia? Karels? Karels? I don't remember. Anyways, the Soviets absolutely violated the Japanese. They fucked the shit out of them. <laughs> it was one of the large reasons why the Japanese elected to a surrender. Hmm. Now, in part, of course, it was the nukes. The nukes were a very persuasive argument for the Japanese to just give it the fuck up already. But it was also the Soviets. See, the Japanese emperor was obviously wanting to maintain his own position. And he knew that if the Soviets took over, he would never be allowed to remain in power. Never. The entire aristocracy, the entire um, system of governments and power, all of that would disappear. Whereas under the Americans, there were at least the possibility, and a fairly decent possibility as well, that they would be allowed to continue. And of course, in the end, they were allowed to continue. So clearly they made the correct choice there. The Emperor's Education. Gabriella patiently stood in the hallway in front of the dressing room, waiting for her nephew and future Emperor to emerge. Already the time has come for young Grover to begin his studies. He was slightly forlorn about losing his free time, but accepted with surprising maturity the responsibility he would be subject towards. Gabriella felt very attached to Grover and felt disappointed, disappointed in herself that she did not have children of her own. If they were precious and adorable like her nephew, she'd find a husband immediately. Unfortunately, very few could meet her expectations. Before she could continue her train of thought, the door opened and Grover stepped up. There you go, chat. If you ever wanted to impregnate Strawberry Bird, this is your opportunity. She wants children. She's eager for children. She desires to be bred, chat. You understand, chat? You still have a chance, chat. Go for it, chat. Go for it. Strawberry Bird. Strawberry Waifu. 
Ah, your majesty. You look quite satisfactory in your uniform, Gabriella complimented, hoping to reduce the nervousness she knew Grover felt. It's rather uncomfortable, Aunt uh, Auntie. Do I have to wear it? Grover pleaded and stretched the colour of his shirt. Clothes make the griffin, dear nephew. I assured you that in good time you'll get used to them very much. Now, have you taken all the materials I told you to prepare? Yes, Auntie, I am ready. He retorted meekly. Very good, my child. Now then, you should know that I have brought the finest tutors from Red... Where, Red... Vetter? Vetter? To teach you everything you'll need to know, such as history, arts, etiquette, rulership, economics, faith, and more. Of course, you'll be given a proper pace so you don't feel burdened. But nay, make no mistake, your studies are very important. Gabriella finished her speech. I know, Auntie Gabby, but... Won't you teach me too? <laughs> Ara, Ara intensifies. The young emperor implored. Those small words struck Gabriella's heart more than she wanted to admit. If it were possible, she would educate her nephew by herself, privately, in her quarters. But lately, all sorts of distractions and responsibilities cut into the already small amount of time she could spare for Grover. He was, of course, quite capable of being on his own, but no child should bear the weight of absent parents. I, when my schedule is free, I will make time for you, my child, I promise. He spoke earnestly, hugging her nephew. He didn't respond after that, taking his time to appreciate Gabriella's motherly embrace. Oh, it's... It's real. Move quickly, chat, lest she be shorted. All right, dear nephew, we don't want you to be late for your first class, yes? No, auntie, I will go now. And with that, with that, the future emperor departed in the opposite direction. Gabriella continued to standing for a while, smiling at the increasingly smaller figure of her nephew. He shall make us all proud. She knew this. Ara, ara. Ara, ara intensifies. Ara, ara asserts itself. Ara Ara is now all but inevitable. Ara Ara, now all but certain. Right, the Imperial Guard requires an expansion, I think. Yes, yes. Ooh, anti-tank. You know, that would not be a bad idea. In fact, can I build any anti-tank? I can't, okay. Maybe I should res research anti-tank. I feel as if anti-tank research might be very, very much so useful in the not-too-distant future. Right. Hmm. Who's next? Are you next, Rome? No, no, Rome will be last. Checkmate the universities. <gasps> universities? Oh. Disgusting. Mmm. Universities. No. I will not allow education in my nation. Education is the way to communism. Crush it. Immediately. We shall not have the filth of academia. Disturbing our fair nation. Not for a second longer than is strictly necessary, we shall. Oh, disgusting academics. Harboring it of socialism, communism, and all manners of disgusting deviant ideologies. Wipe them from the earth. Treat them like the vermin they are. The foul cockroach cockroach offspring of failed ideologies. We shall invade from the north. Like the vengeful barbarians of old, we shall leave nothing behind. Can I have more knights, by the way? Uh, can I have more knights? So, uh... Actually, how do knights compare to the Imperial Guard? Uh, how do they, actually? Okay, Imperial Knights, soft attack 120, defense 173. Okay, so they're lagging a little bit behind now. Maybe I want to triple up the Knights as well. 
Maybe, maybe. Disgusting academics. How dare they even exist in my beautiful monarchist nation? How dare they raise their filthy objections to my dear, good, honest rule? I'm getting a little bit worried about the Aquilonian Republic. It is growing rather quickly. I don't like that. Oh boy, okay, we've basically eaten all of our pony power, but our army is enormously powerful, so let's hope that that's good enough. Medium tanks, dedicated aircraft cannons, inline engines, Adler Lufthaven. Drive forward, my darlings. Drive the academics back into the swamp of ignorance and retardation from which they inevitably always emerge. Hmm, maybe I should use the tank. Are you the big division? No. Is it you? That's the... is that the changeling one? No, I don't think so. Okay, you then. Come down here. Let's see if we can blitzkrieg this bitch a little bit, shall we? I think we can. Very nice. Yes, yes. Yes, the Imperial Knights broke through immediately. Destroying all opposition. And the armies of the filthy, disgusting institutions have not even begun to move. Mm. So reliant on their dumb books, they did not even see it coming. Weakness. Weakness is to be disgusted and abhorred whatever possible. I think it's time to set up that recruiting system, though. Full population factor 5, training time, and pony power. Yep. And you know what? The time for volunteer armies is past. Hmm. Training time? Let's go for extensive conscription. I have extensive ambitions, and so we shall be a nation in arms. We shall. Along the French pattern. I'm beginning to feel nervous, are we, Papists? Ooh, okay, we're garrisoning something now, are we? Okay, well, uh... Secret police, I think, is gonna be good. And let's not use an Imperial Guard division for that. That sounds rather retarded to me. Let's see, what have we got? Something nice and oppressive. Garrison? Garrison is infantry. Do I have anything that isn't infantry? No. Do I have militia? I do not believe I do. Infantry template. No. Infantry, I think, is the base. Um, Imperial Reservists? Okay, the garrison template will do that. But add in a military police company, of course. No, no, no. Imperial Garrison. There we are. Better, better. Another fine and swift victory. Now look upon your silly little nation, clergyman. How do you feel? Lost? Abandoned? Defeated? I hope so. 
Uh, insane linguist. Americans allowed the emperor to remain in order to pacify the population and to prevent uprisings and or revolutions. They did indeed. They did indeed. It must also be noted that MacArthur was a big fan of the emperor. Oh boy, I'm gonna need a lot more, a lot more guns apparently. MacArthur was a huge fan of the emperor. MacArthur was completely taken in by the emperor. Um, and he granted him basically all of his special privileges right on back again. Um, it was also partially MacArthur's own personality. MacArthur, well, let's put it like this. MacArthur was the kind of guy that probably viewed himself as a living god. <laughs> and thus, being meeting an actual person who had managed to pull off the whole thing. Oh, yes, no, I'm, um, yeah, I'm, 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 I'm a, I'm, I'm a god. Probably gave MacArthur all kinds of interesting ideas for himself. Like, oh, really now? You, uh... You made them believe that? Yep. Was it difficult? Mm, surprisingly easy, actually. <sighs> MacArthur rubs his hands appreciatively. Yes, I do, I do suspect the two of them were destined to be best buds. Pride win Republic. I'm not liking the rise of so much communism everywhere. Nova Grifonia, Stalingrad tensions. After Nova Grifonia oppressed socialism in its country, they got into conflict with their southern neighbor of Stalingrad. Word has gotten out that the communist nations has sent a formal warning to Nova Grifonia to cease... Oh. Well, never mind. <laughs> to cease this behavior or they would intervene to protect the rights of the griffin and pony workers. Troops on both sides of the border and put on high alert and a wrong move by either side might spark the tension into a full-blown conflict. And there we go. The death of Nova Griffonian democracy. Not long ago, Governor Teafeather was assassinated and a provisional government was formed in Vetter until the country could establish the goal of the government was to eventually give way to democratic election. However, it seems that such an election shall not be happening anytime soon. As a day ago, Field Marshal High Hill marched upon the governmental palace at the forefront of a column of soldiers and proceeded to dissolve the provisional government. Nova Griffonia's future now rests in High Claw's hands. Oh, good. Kill the communists. Murder communists. End communism. Here. You want guns? I got guns for you. Okay, maybe not that many. Here. A thousand rifles to end communism with. Take this and kill as many communists and socialists as you possibly can. The Loyal North. Hmm, who's next on the checklist? Purify Catherine? The Faithistian Cadet Schools. The Faithistians. Fa Faithistian. Hmm. Purify Catherine, that's the Catherine Principality. Oh, it'll make me bored of the communists, yes. I wish to make it so that the communist knows what's coming for them. They're going to understand, ooh, they've fortified their border, haven't they? But not the southern border. A foolish mistake, communists. That you shall learn to rue, I guarantee it. And I think the Imperial Knights are more than enough to overcome a little bit of fortifications, don't you? I believe so. The Grand Imperial Army has yet to meet a foe it cannot simply crush beneath its hoofs. Well, not so much hoofs in this case as claws, but you get my general drift. You will see your fortresses crumble and turn to dust, socialist scum. It will benefit you not. 
Cthulhu, any chance you'll watch and review Civil War? Some interesting topics in the movie about human disconnection when exposed to war and extreme violence. I intend to. I'm waiting for a proper source of it to come out, as the only thing I've found so far are uh, not good. <laughs> not, not good. Uh, very bad, in fact. Ooh, yeah, I'll take that. Uh, so I'm waiting for a proper resolution version. News came from the Kingdom of Vidina today, announcing the engagement between King Vingsfrom's daughter, Princess Skoldsvallard, and Princess Lickling. The happy couple will be married in a few days' time. The highly anticipated marriage will secure the succession of Vidina, which has been in dispute for some time. Only time will tell if this union will be a happy one or an unhappy one. The Yareldom of Shital joins the Dear Law Restorationists. Earlier today, the Yareldom of Sambad and the Yareldom of Shital issued a joint statement that the latter has now been formally granted membership status of the Dear Law Restoration. Whether this partnership will be used for offense or defensive purposes remains to be seen. Well, uh, all Hindian National Bloc, Barasinga. Okay, shit's going down on the southern. Integrate Bronze Hill for 200. Um, eventually, but we need conscription first. We need extensive mass conscription first. I'm saving for conscription. We need ponies to understand where they belong. And where they belong is on the front Can't goddamn the lines. Fire is the answer. <laughs> Self sealing tanks sound lovely to me. Ooh, research slot. I should have gone for that one, actually, directly, because that one's really useful. Shadow Fox 2300. Wow, even in game, the communists don't pay attention to their southern borders. They don't! Populous civilized. Now that the education has been made compulsory for young griffins, literacy rates are increasing rapidly. Every young citizen has been the, has the duty of memorizing the imperial alphabet and learning how to read many classics as well as the holy books. Teachers receive higher wages and their jobs is becoming increasingly respected, motivating many to study pedagogy. pedagogy. Every city, town and village within the empire now has a fully staffed school building. All our work and investment is starting to finally bear fruit, as a recent survey demonstrates that entire, even the poorest of the poor can read relatively well and write basic sentences. Such as, I hate communism, I hate communism, I hate communism. We are on our way to becoming a truly modern nation. Good for me. I enjoy becoming a modern nation. Conscription is the bedrock of any modern nation. Joined the army today. We have much clay yet to claim. Griffonia will be won again. Regardless of what anyone has to say about it. Hmm. Abandoning their fortifications? A foolish thing. Even communists should know better. Hmm. Supply situation not great. You three, return to Griffenheim. Post haste. We will smash through in the south and open up the north. Heresy is the question. Fire is the answer. <laughs> Are you gonna leave? If you're gonna leave, then do it. Ah, classic Hearts of Iron AI. Allow me to leave my capital completely undefended. Thank you. I appreciate it. I appreciate it more than you could possibly know. Sweep in behind them, please. Cut them off. Take away their bullets. Take away their guns. Take away their food. Take away all the things they need to resist us. Not fast enough, silly willies. Service guarantees citizenship. I think this will announce the establishment of a nice little pocket, I think, yes. The Tri-Party Union. After years of warfare to the anger and happiness of many, the shattered lands of Duchy of Verenia has been united under a single leadership. 
While this was surprisingly resulted by itself, what was unexpected was instead the House Eerie and Eerie led by the most legitimate claimants to the throne. It was House Avian under its matriarchal Lady Katerina which would be the unifying force. However, whilst the so-called Tri-Party Union did indeed unify the three houses and the leadership of House Avian, it isn't a complete unification yet, as House Eerie and Eer and Eyre are still somewhat independent in many ways. Is this the new status quo of the region, a somewhat reformed yet heavily decentralized Verenia, or will Verenia be reforged into a centralized kingdom with House Avian on top? Mm. Keep going, keep going. Don't let the scum get ahead of us. The Aquilians March. Once upon a time, the Kingdom of Aquilonia stretched over a much larger area than it controlled just a few years ago. Called the Periphery, it fitted into what iridentists in Aquilia have called the natural borders of the realm. The Aquilian government has announced that as of today that the nation has reclaimed her rightful borders and that they will be integrated into Aquilonia itself as soon as possible, with all necessary and proper speed. Though protests have come in from the leaders of the nations that formerly occupied those lands, little sign of showing of the Aquilian government giving them up. At the deadline for this paper, little more than token protests have been lodged by the nations of the world. Fire is the answer. <laughs> You cannot resist Griffonian arms, filth. It simply can't be done. Let's see. Kaiserlich Marine, army experience. Pony power, I do need that pony power. I do indeed. Alright, well, if you can keep them... Just busy there for a little while longer. They are streaming south. They wish to interfere in my attempts to cut them off. I do not wish to let them, although I'm afraid uh, they've abandoned the frontier. Okay. They're probably going to make it out, unfortunately. Tragic though that may be. At least in part. Come on, tankies. Ah, damn it. Yeah, they managed to coalesce too many retreating troops. Very well. We shall do it the good old fashioned way then. With overwhelming localized superiority. Oh, hello. Uh, unless, of course, you then immediately move away again. In which case, I will quite happily move forward to try and take advantage of your silliness. Come now, come now. Do not let them disengage wherever possible. Little bit more, little bit more. You got this. That's one division destroyed. Beautiful. Ah. The gay hold at all cost thing, huh? Well, it's not going to matter now, is it? It is not going to matter now, one iota. As you are all stuck. Completely and utterly. Good. Continue the advance on the capital. Separate it from its allies. Prepare to surround and annihilate the last remnants of their pathetic resistance. They will soon be starved of ammunition, of rifles, of food, of every sustenance necessary for organized warfare. And if we are feeling particularly charitable, perhaps we'll even take some prisoners. Who knows? Who knows? Might be better. Well, they are fellow nobles like us. I suppose they they might, in theory, deserve a degree of mercy. Heresy is the question. Fire is the answer. 
The lucky ones will become prisoners of war. The not so lucky ones will not. And let's let up a little bit on the supply lines. They are beginning to be somewhat overstretched. The capital will soon... Oh, oh you've elected to surrender the capital, have you? Unwise. Unwise. Oh, I don't know how the hell you got in there in time, but apparently you didn't. Okay. Oh, ah, uh, I see. I didn't see the thing there. Silly, silly. Hmm. A setback. Minor, though it may be, still an annoyance. Oh, you are in that province of Get the knights over there. Get them over. They've put up more resistance than they deserve. I don't like it. I don't like it one bit. Speaking of, i also been wasting time not doing research thing. Get that one underway. Get that one underway. Medium. Five, 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 five. Same thing. Uh, that one, because he's got a pretty uh, pep, a pretty good arrow. And I think no, not quite yet. Mm, no. Let's buff the knights, if anything. Recovery rate. Hmm. Boisel Knabel's experimental ear type eleven. What? Excuse-moi? And that is... what, exactly? That is what, exactly, actually, yes. Unironically, what is that? Ah, I did need pack guns. Ah. Hmm... Our changeling friends? Military factories. More. You can never have enough military factories. Literally impossible. Right, come on. Finally separate that capital away from everything else. Damnable places hold out, held out for too long. Much better. And withdraw the tanks, too. Let's free up as much of their supply lines as we can. Sweep northwards towards Strasbourg. And with that, I think we'll be able to get them surrender. Another nation successfully liberated at long last. The Socialist Republic of Skynavia. That is a nice name. I like it. Are you done training? You've been done training for ages. Come now, before the next thing pops. I wish to announce the conquest of this silly little nation. Resisted for too long already. There we are. Hiding behind their filthy fortifications. But it did not save them, now did it? It did not. Oh boy. So, what did I miss? Mechanics on duty. Me thinks you forgot about anti tank. I did. I am getting it now. Shadow Fox 20 Theater, why even in the game, communists don't pay attention to the southern borders. I had that one. Uh, Range Steel. When it comes to the division building, what is the best build for armored divisions and infantry? 
Well, personally, I prefer literally this. The good old-fashioned triplicate with two to three artillery and anti-tank. It's not the meta build. I don't know what the meta build is now. The meta build used to just be just infantry, but I like the triplicates because it's pseudo-historically accurate. And for panzers, um, three panzers and then three or four of uh, uh, motorized. Does the job pretty well, for, in my experience. But for the best, you're going to have to ask somebody uh, different. As there are meta builds in this game. Oh god, are there meta builds. There are absolutely meta builds. There are some really ridiculous meta builds, in fact. As, uh, believe it or not, but competitive Hearts of Iron is absolutely a thing. Very much so. Did I finish the, uh, no, anti-partisan? I want to crush the resistance as quickly as possible. Thank you very much. Right, that... We'll then finally leave the Holy City open, I believe. Which we will take with our knights. And a small securing force. Of course, on the other side of the river. Going to need a little bit of retraining now that all of our new toys are beginning to arrive on Mars, but that's fine. Pony power, still growing, good. The pony power problems of yesteryears are gone to us. Changelings occupy the polar bears. The imperialist changeling policy have taken another victim. Those being the secluded polar bear community in the frozen north. While the bears have been mostly isolated from worldly politics at large, that changed with the arrival of a changeling envoy who demanded various concessions for their queen. Knowing that resistance is futile, Bjornling agreed to all the changeling demands in exchange for their protection and payment. The queen was very pleased with this outcome, and a tight alliance was established binding the bears to the changeling hegemony in exchange for the changeling military protection. Much of the bears' iron and gold reserves have been moved out of the country towards Visepolis, fueling the future changeling war effort. Their citizens are dissatisfied to have bent over before the changeling demands, but are more grateful to have kept a small measure of their independence and lives. Unfortunately, communism is winning over here, which I don't like. I don't like the idea of the communists advancing anywhere. The advancement of any, any communist force, no matter how minor, no matter how circumspect, no matter how far away, constitutes an inimical threat to humanity. Now, what on God's er good earth is a Blautel Knallbusch experiment here? Ah, that one. Okay, well, uh, if you think I need that, then I will agree that I need that to make better knights. As the knights are kind of awesome. Uh, which one of these did I pick? That one, probably. Right, begin anti-tank gun production as well. We will have the best equipped army in all the realm. The Stormlord's Regency, whatever the hell that is. And now, now, Rome. Now you too fall. Yes, I think future enemies, eh? Let's begin building up a little bit of railways, shall we? Two, hmm, it'll do for now. I could use more fuel, too. Let's build fuel silos. And more civilian industries. I will have an economy capable of drowning any enemy. Uh, 
And I shall have a spy network capable of taking care of the remnants as well. Samuel, Eddie, make them better communist art. You know what to do. I'll make honest communists out of them, if nothing else. Psycho Star, been watching some Fallout discourse lately, not seen much to why it's good, but a lot of talk about their nostalgia and their Fallout fan cred. Yes, same. Um, I've seen very few people actually arguing for why it's good. I've seen a lot of vague, like, oh, yeah, no, it was, uh, it was totally, like, good or something, but very little explanation as to why that is supposedly the case. Oh, boy. Feisty, aren't we? Feisty, aren't we indeed? Hello. Oh, I didn't expect you to put up a fight. Very well. Quickly dispatch further divisions then. Actually, I'm kind of... You know what? I kind of want them to leave their city. I mean, if they're going to be willing to leave their city, I'm actually kind of thinking that letting them leave their city is not such a bad idea. Oh, they're also doing the forced attack. Yeah, that's what they're doing fairly well. The forced attack is nasty. It gives you some enormous benefits. It also costs you a ridiculous amount of manpower, mind you. Mm, damn it, they're not going to actually leave the city, are they? Right, well, in that case... I was kind of hoping they might leave the city. That'd be lovely. You can see how... You can see their strength. Their strength is disappearing rapidly. Because false attack hurts a lot. God damn, does it hurt a lot. Oh, they've got knights too! That explains why they're doing fairly well. Yes. Ooh. Well, I should have seen that coming, shouldn't I? Mm. Support technology, the Lovestein trucks. I don't need trucks. I do need industry. Give me industry. Give me industry. The sword of the future is the factory. And ironically, the sword of the future is the factory. Government cipher schools. Radio and step groups. Hmm. I kind of don't mind if this fight continues for a while, actually. In fact... Send another knight organization down there. Ah, damn it. I was kind of actually hoping that would continue for a bit, because that was a beautiful way to perhaps clean out a little bit of their manpower reserves. Alright, knights. It's time for some heavy-duty, deep-and-dirty city fighting, I believe. Let's not attack across the river if we can help it. That would be silly. Oh boy. Here becomes the grind. Now this is why I should have had some aircraft, because aircraft would have helped quite a bit in these endeavors. Quite a bit indeed. As we are probably going to have to engage in some pretty heavy-duty grind here, I imagine. Heresy is the quest. In fact, Fire deploy the further answer. divisions. <laughs> we are going to have to bathe the streets of Rome in blood if we wish to dethrone the illeg illegitimate tyrants of the... the Equestrian Papal States, I suppose? We shall have to cover them. Anna, don't, don't halt the attack, you silly willy nonka nincompoops. Do not cease. Continue. I know, I know. Our casualties are going to be horrific. Such is life. Celevi. 
You're going to have to die for the rest of us to be liberated from papal oppression. It's just how it's going to have to be. I would like to be able to... Hmm, do I have enough stuff to tag that as well? I do, don't I? In that case, let's. Continue to wear them down to the bone. There's a lot more of us than there are of them. Any defensive position, no matter how fierce, no matter how powerful, no matter how impregnable, can be made quite pregnant indeed if you simply throw enough men at it. This is a very valuable lesson to learn, and one that uh, is better learned early on in life, of course. Alright, I might be able to choke it out straight up. Oh, right, you can't actually access that for reasons. There we go, keep both of them tagged. Ah, there goes the you can't damage me now for a while order. I do hate that order. I do truly despise it. And I'm not going to issue an attack order of my own because I don't want to lose that many people, if at all possible. Oh god, I hate that ability. I do hate that ability. I do hate that ability. Mm, come on. Just keep grinding in against them. Their strength is being much reduced by their stubborn resistance. And thus, their ability to withstand will also be slowly but surely reduced. Stalingrad has taken Nova Griffonia. Well, isn't that just unfortunate? It is. I was hoping they'd put up a bit more of a struggle against the communists, but no. Uh, did they pop it again? They did. Well, they'll run out of military power to do that eventually, I think. I hope. Otherwise, this will literally never end. You know, there's really no point in attacking. Let's wait for it to go away. Do do do. How much does it cost? It costs. 62! Jesus, I'm surprised they've had that much, actually. Resume the attack. On both targets, of course. Of course. Get back in there, boys and girls. We have a war to win. Let's also do this. We've got the research. Planes would help. Planes would help. Hmm. Air experience. You know, that would be good, because I'm going to be building aircraft soon. Seducer. Ah, bad. Popped it again. Right, cancel. No point. God, they've got a lot more command power than I would have expected. Do to do to do. Psycho Saisa, also Kenshi. Alright, I'll add it to the Kenshi fun. Do to do to do indeed. And back at it. Right, so long as they don't pop their we are immune to organizational damp. Really? 
right now. I think the AI is doing a little bit of good old-fashioned cheating, isn't it? I'm pretty sure you're... You're long out of that. Yep, it's... Oh. I didn't know you could do that in the Equestria War mod. Well, that makes taking this place, I think, actually literally impossible without aircraft. Hell, even without aircraft, you're not actually going to be doing much against them because, uh, yeah. Right, do I have anything? I do. Uh, what region is this in? I don't actually know. I'm going to assume it's over there. Or is it over here? I can't actually tell. I think it's over there. Okay. Boop -a -doop -a -doop. For seven days. God. Okay. And yet again. I might... I might just have to grind through it. I really don't want to. But it's looking like you might actually just have to suck it up and continue the grind for seven days and then continue it again. Ah, uh, yep. They have an infinite... Ah, uh, yes. The AI cheats. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. They cheat bad. They cheat really bad. Oh, boy. Okay, that is going to be pretty horrific, then. That is going to be pretty horrific. Okay, well, just got to maintain the grind, then, for however long it takes. That is going to be expensive. Very expensive. Alright, we'll begin throwing in the tanks, too, because at least the tanks will last for a good old while. No, do not stop. Under no circumstances can you ever stop. Ever. Not ever. Ah, will they run out of org first or strength? At this rate, honestly, probably actually strength. As the aircraft are helping now and they will be doing some damage, they'll be doing primarily strength damage. The Vidinian Royal Wedding. Wedding bells sound through the Turkum Tower day as Princess Skoldvar and the King of Vidina was married. However, the day was not without its challenges. Dark magic marred the wedding. Really? Dark magic of all things. Okay. Mm, I really want to continue the attack there. Wait until they start moving something. If King of Vidin was about to fall into turmoil, how would the traitorous leader of the coup decide to honor Vidinian tradition and challenge Skoldsvader to a duel? Huh. That's nice of him, very honorable. Through the ancient godsword of Urvinling, with the powerful magical sword, the traitors were quickly dispatched. And that is why you should not be honorable, because if you are honorable, you will be defeated, as it turns out. Skoldsvard now rules in the Vidina and looks outwards to foreign affairs. No, do not fucking halt the fucking assault, you silly monkeys. And no circumstances will you stop. None. This is a war of eternal violence and eternal grind. You will not stop. You will continue to attack. The Storm King's heir. Storm clouds gather over Zebrika. Right. Well, that's on the other end of the world. And... Largely irrelevant to the current enormous struggle. Right. Try to intercept any reinforcements. And there goes the we are immune to damage again. Oh, Jesus. Yeah, so long as they can do that, I actually have no way whatsoever to do any damage to them at all, I think. Okay. We're gonna have to cheese this. Since the AI cheats, I will cheat. Very well.
in the face of a little bit of cheat, what you do is you carry out more cheat. Simple as. They have infinite command power? Very well. I'll simply allow them to come out of their city then. Dum -da -dum -dum -dum. The Roaring Tiger! There you go, come on, leave the city. You know you want to. There we are, simple dimple. This is cheating, I consider this to be outright cheating, but if the AI cheats, you cheat back. The Roaring Tiger, the preparations for the young Emperor birthday has been going on for several months. Caterers have been researching the Emperor's palette for hours on end until... Hours on end in an attempt to discover the perfect menu for the event. Uh, just wait, forget that. For the event and the great interior designers available have been desi designing the venue for the event. The tide of gifts for the young ruler has been almost overflowing with many nobles using the event as a ch chance to curry favor with the emperor. But it seems that among the flood of gifts the emperor's favorite comes directly from the embassy of the changeling lands. While this would normally not be a problem, as establishing strong ties with foreign allies is an important part of being emperor, the gift itself was highly unusual. Actually, I can also integrate the dogs. While an exotic pet or expensive treasure might have been anticipated as gifts, what was not expected was a fully functioning Panzer Kampfwagen. <laughs> Six Tiger. Decorated in Imperial colors. Whilst it's an author at five. Actually, the gift was not a problem in itself. It seems that somebody forgot to secure the keys to the tank. The Emperor soon showed up, dragging the top tank aces of the Empire with him and demanding that he be put into the driver's seat. What followed was an impromptu crash course on tank command. As the Emperor set out into the countryside along with his crew, only returning after a massive griffin hunt had been started. On a positive note, it seems that the young Emperor showed skill as a tank commander and has displayed interest in increasing funding for the Imperial Committee for Armoured Research and Development, demanding another tank for his next birthday. Brilliant. That's a good gift, a full, massive-ass tank. I would not say no to such a gift. Such a gift has to be the best gift ever. Right, let's start... Reducing them then a little bit more all over the place. Oh, no, you too. There. That'll make things a little bit easier for me. Quite a lot easier for me, in fact. That unit of knights is literally at 0% strength. Impressive. There. And suddenly, the impregnable city is looking a lot more pregnable, isn't it? A lot more pregnable indeed. Now, we still do need to, of course, slowly but surely surround and murder it in, but with fewer units there, they're not going to be able to do anywhere near as much damage to us. Much, much better. And hey, again, I consider this to be a rather dishonest way of doing things, but, you know, sometimes, sometimes... Sometimes complicated problems require innovative solutions, and this, this is one of those. An inventive rethinking, relying primarily on the AI's much lauded inability to, well, think beyond its tip of its nose. 
Ponsk's also 22. Hey, Arch, I think you missed my super chat 25 minutes ago. Did I? In which case, I am very sorry. Let me check. I'm just going to control F your name. Uh, Arch, you mentioned the MLP Faller, but I remember the mod for Fall 3 got canned in 2010. I don't recognize the Pink Griffin, and is the mod vanilla friendly? Um, the mod vanilla friendly? I I don't know. And Fallout, Equ Fallout Equestria is not a mod, it's a entire book series, apparently. Somebody wrote, like, in a massive amount of fan fiction, uh, dubbed Fallout Equestria, which is, like, f uh, oh, My Little Pony in the Fallout universe, basically, which uh, people have been asking me to read. But seeing as I've also been told that it's like 50 hours long, I am hesitant to do so. There we go. A little cheaty, but... Mm. Hmm. Okay, the first Sonic Cadet School. Add for the Stone Cadet School, which grants army experience gained daily, uh, starting level New Liz 1, land doctrine cost, gain 1 research slot. Or uh, which grants daily political power gain, stability 5, research speed 5, gain 1 research slot. That one. I mean, the army one is cute, but long term, research slots is basically always going to be superior in virtually every single circumstance. That was quite a few casualties, but I have quite a few more ponies upon which to count. So, all in all, a fair enough trade, I do suppose. I do think we're going to want a Chief of the Air Force, though. Air superiority, first and foremost. If you cannot secure it, then no quantity of aircraft are really going to help you out now, are they? Stallion Grad. Republic of Nova Grafonia. Hmm. I don't like that the socialists are doing so well. Heresy is the question. Fire is the answer. <laughs> Secret police forces, please. Make sure that they're not getting rowdy or uppity. Good, good. Shadow Fox 23 First, Stakuya, and now Arch. Need more YouTuber playing the pony mod for Hearts of Iron. It is a good mod. It is unironically a good mod. And I do also need to look over my army a little bit. So, hmm. We, we're going to need tanks. We're going to need tanks. Magic rifles. I don't know what magic rifles are. But apparently I use them, so I think I shall want more of them. The North Zebrican War. Tension with North Zebrica have boiled over as the Carthaginian Republic and Kiro Petra have joined forces to attack the once isolated state of the United Kingdom of Ares. The region was left devastated in the aftermath of the Storm King's conquest, and these two states have enjoyed a meteoric rise to power. Finally turning to challenge the armies which once defeated the Yeti Warlords. I see, the Yeti Warlords, aha. Uh -huh. While Salasta Zarka has assured uh, the international observers that the Carthaginian Republic seeks only to liberate their Zo Zonican brothers and sisters from our Arisian imperialism, it is an any creature's guess how this war will end, or what motivated the Hermite states of Kirapetria to strike. Sand Doom, Imperial Griffin Blitzkrieg Birthday Bash, awesome! And the Hillian Juggalo Om. Om. Oh, 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 no. Old World Blues mod stream, though? Well, if somebody wants to fund it, we can do the Old World Blues as well. You can even pick the faction. All right. Uh, it has been a little over the customary three hours. I really do enjoy this mod, even though there's, there's a lot of reading. And I want to do more of it now. I'm going to... I think I'm going to try and, you know, bash through this in RimWorld. Yes. Yes. Because this is a fun mod. I like this mod. This is a good mod. In fact, we don't need those. Three lines is probably good enough, right? We're going to need more probably... Um, we're going to need more rubber. We are going to need a lot more rubber, me suspects. 
So until next time, thank you very much for watching, chat. Thank you very much for your generous donations as well. And why exactly are you guys up there dying on the border? Are you, are you diamond dog things? You're diamond dog things, aren't you? Yes, you are. Well, come down here. Actually, all of you, come down here where you don't need to starve to death. What the hell are you? Iron Paw Division? Heresy. Cringe! Fire Delete immediately. Disgusting. And not a banned account for two dollars. Can custodious women become with child and birth? Well, that's a thing, something that Games Heresy. Workshop is gonna have to address Fire now, aren't the they? <laughs> Ah, uh, stupid, stupid AW. Well, until next time, have a good day, chat.